The Houston Outlaws just pulled off the 3-1 victory over the Soul Dynasty. And while that's pretty good for the Houston Outlaws because they end the, the whole entire stage on a good note, it's pretty bad for the Soul Dynasty because now the fate of whether or not they make it to this weekend's title matches rest in the hands of other teams. Up next, we got another big one between the NYXL and the Dallas Fuel. Now, this is big because if the NYXL win this match, they clinched their spot in this weekend's title matches. But you better believe the Dallas Fuel are not trying to go out of this stage with losses. You guys ready for this one? All right, all right. All right, well, let's go ahead and get right back into the action. Blizzard Arena, we still got two more matches. Are you guys here? Are you ready? Make some noise, everybody. I was taking a little post-coffee nap. We need to wake them back <laughs> up because we got two more games to get to. I'm your host, Puckett. I got the whole desk crew. And we got to start with you, Zoe. Houston just pulled off the upset. Did you see this one coming? I, yes, of course I did. I always believed did. in the outlaws. But no, on a serious note, they're ending this stage with a 5-5 record. And I think, honestly, considering how much they struggled, like, midway through, this is a fantastic result for them, and that really gives them another morale boost. And it's now time to find out, will the upsets continue? Let's take a look at the remaining matches for the day. A little bit later, it's San Francisco and New Sinatra in the lineup going up against the Boston Uprising. But first, we got the New York XL going up against the Dallas Fuel, and let's start right there, right now. And I want to open things up here with the New York XL. This squad is coming off a big Game 5 victory over the Seoul Dynasty. They're the number one seed in the overall standings. They're the number one seed in the Stage 2 standings. So the question here today, does this team have any weaknesses that Dallas could potentially exploit? Because so far, they're the most consistent squad and the best squad in the league by far. They definitely are. On paper and in terms of how they structure their team, their teamwork, it all looks excellent. If there's one weakness that I could point to or a potential weakness, it would be the way they play around Ark and Jonak. Normally considered a strength because the two guys are so good, but they leave them on their own a lot. And it requires Ark and Jonak to come out with clutch plays. They need to hit the sleep darts. They need to hit crazy shots from the Zen. So if they're having an off day and Effect and whoever the tank is can step up, that's when the potential weakness of NYXL could be exploited. I love that side behind you. Jonak would have saved him. Absolutely. <laughs> Bren, let's talk about Dallas, though. We've talked now about a potential weakness in the supports. How can Dallas take advantage of this? Yeah, if there's anyone who's going to be able to do this right here, right now, it's going to be effect, right? You know, we're not messing around here. This man, he can pull out the Genji, the Doomfist, you know, all sorts of DPS. And at the end of the day, he is the one capable of shutting down these weaknesses, shutting down the, the solo support play style that New York and Celsius like to go for. That's really the weak point that Dallas are now going to aim for today. He'll have to go through Sabi Orbi to get there, though, and that is never easy. We saw him dueling against Stryker, dueling against uh, Sinatra as well. Uh, this guy is excellent, and he can pull out a huge range of heroes to be able to do it, but it's going to be tricky for him. All right, let's talk a little bit about Dallas. They've had a rough stage two so far, and now they're receiving some more bad news. If you've been following social media, well, it's got everybody talking right now. What's the story, Zoe? Uh, you know what? They just can't catch a break. We all looked for OGE to step it up in uh, Stage 3 to be their main tank, and he has now officially been suspended for four matches. So they once again will be lacking that main tank role, which of course is crucial for them. His suspension was caused due to some uh, account boosting schemes he's been participating in. That of course goes against the Blizzard end user license agreement. Dallas just can't seem to cut a break. You got nope. XQC getting DQ'd, then off the team. You got Taimu trying to fill in. Mickey's in the mix on Orisa at times. What happens today? OGE, he wasn't going to play till stage three anyway. So Dallas had to see this plan coming. What should be the best lineup that we could put together from the Dallas Fuel? knowing they need I a mean, main tank. You know, you've still got your boy Seagull sitting somewhere in the back lines. You know, he's still sitting there. Maybe sub well, him in, you know, tank. free to gulk a car, a car. I don't really know. But, <laughs> I mean, they've still got time as well. It's a bit of a mix-up because they have been experimenting so much with the main tanks. Uh, at the end of the day, the world is their oyster to a degree, kind of, maybe. I love the Seagull oyster kind of connections you made there. Thank you, Thank you yes. so much. That's what we're doing. The sea, that was you know. Enough talking. Are you guys ready to start this match? <laughs> 
Let's get right to it. It's time to see number one going up against the Dallas Fuel. Jonak survives! Boom! Right into the back line. Big plays coming in here from Libero. Self-destruct comes in. Oh, it got pulled! Mickey! So nice tactic from the Dallas Fuel. Everything is being committed to this fight by the NYXL. Dallas flips it back. Denied. Effect with a big kill there. Pines there. He stands tall. Got close at the end there, but they pulled it out. Sporting a 16-2 overall record. Please welcome to the stage the New York XL. And what a man to lead this team. Saviolvi said time and time again to be the best tracer in the league. Today, he'll be man-marking effect. We'll look out for the rest of this squad. This is a serious opponent for the Fuel. It sure is. And talk about Saviolvi, he also must be the coolest person to walk out on stage. Cool. So suave. Have you seen? <laughs> it's all in the haircut. <laughs> so much swag I going on today. I think Reinforce has got a bit of a crush on him. I'm not going to lie. He talks about him a lot in our part. He does. He really does. Now, uh, talking about this team, though, uh, given that both their opponents in this week have been struggling as of late, they actually told me that this uh, gives them the opportunity to, to actually prepare and focus on their playoff games already. So now I hope that doesn't mean <laughs> that Dallas goes underneath their radar. And uh, Mecco surely isn't sleeping on their Wake opponents. up, Mecco. You're the best off tank in the game, they say. Yeah. They and say. It's a really good point, though, Zoe, because NYXL failed to hide their strategies coming into the playoffs and lost it. got a bit of a debate on their hands do you try and show everything to take down Dallas who have been struggling and ensure you make the playoffs or do you try and leave something in reserve we'll have to see yeah at the end of the day the one player I'm gonna be looking out for in this game is gonna be the support duo Jonak and Ark these two we talked about them playing the sort of solo sort of you know defender or to defend yourself sort of gameplay can they pull it out against Dallas when they have so many sort of openings with such strong players on that nah, man just watch Mecco the guy's nasty <laughs> that's a look at New York it's time to introduce their opponent from Texas let's hear it for the Dallas Fuel Some of the biggest names in Overwatch before the league began. Right now, though, a disappointing 5-13 overall. Like Houston, though, they're looking to end their stage too strong. Yeah, and I mean, looking at this roster, what they got lining up here, the Seagull is going to be unleashed, you know. I guess Twitch chat it all paid off, all that spam, you know. He is finally coming out onto the roster. <laughs> and it looks like without Taimu in the roster, they are mixing up the way these tank lineups are going to be working. Where's the main it's tank? To see. Ryan, huh? Where is the main tank is the question. I mean, maybe they might run triple deep. Yes, you never know. That's a joke, by the way. Please don't call me out on that business. <laughs> I have actually no idea what they're going to run here, though. We heard uh, in interviews that Seagull was thinking of turning over to more of a diva role and off tank. Does that mean Mickey's going to pick up main tank? What, what's going on? You know what? The good news is that means that probably NYXL are also not having a clue what they're going to see out of That's the Dallas true. Fuel. So this could be working in their favor. And that one actually... <laughs> nice. Yes. Appreciate it. Hold the pose. Hold, Hold it. And okay. There we go. No, that was, that was good. Solid efforts right there. But uh, yeah, when I talk to NYXL, like, do they expect Dallas Fuel to actually even take a map? Because that did happen in stage one. They said, yeah, maybe end map. But that's it. They don't expect to lose more than that. So let's see. A very wise bird from the control room just put in my ear. Mickey's playing main tank, boys. Oh, okay. Seagull. Okay. Okay. Are you going to fly or are you playing off tank? We're going to find out in just a moment. Are you guys ready? Make some noise. It's match two, day two, week five, the final week here at stage two. We got your catchers. It's similar with Hex. Thank you, Pocket. And the desk. And to the person who made my day in the crowd with the Bren sign. Listen, <laughs> we all know that is Brenzi's desk. He owns it. Now he's starting to get some of that recognition, Hex. It's got to feel so sweet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, as, as, <laughs> if his, as if his ego needs any more help. I saw him living in a pile of boxes not too long ago. So who knows what's going on I with Bren at any has, given day. I think he still has the inflatable mattress. He's been here for like four months now, and he's still got, he's still sleeping on an inflatable mattress. Just a wreck of a human being. But Bren's <laughs> great. That's why we love him. That's why we love him so much. And well, obviously, for the straight fire that he drops on the desk day in, day out. Guys, yes, it will be... We just got told by the fuel they walked through the room here through the caster booth. Yeah. We just got told by Siegel that he will be in fact playing D.Va and that Mickey's going to be swinging the Ryan hammer. Yeah, I mean, we'll see if that actually ends up being the case, but I think the main thing is that Mickey was 
definitely going to be playing main tank. Now, if that ends up on Winston or something else, then we'll see. I mean, right now, we, can, we are privy to see that he is queued up on the Reinhardt. But I think this is a smart move by Dallas. What do you really have to lose at this point? Put in your best players. Try to get some team chemistry. We were talking a little, you know, outside of Owl and said, like, I think that Dallas is just missing, like, an in-game leader. Just yeah. someone's got to take a leadership role of who's going to be that guy on stage. Forget about coaching, GM decision. Who's going to be your six who's going to listen to you? And I think Seagull actually could be that guy. He's hyper-intelligent, really smart. He's just about being vocal. I think maybe Custa can step up to the plate there, some of the new additions. And, yeah, I mean, that's what they're looking for. I'm looking just for signs of improvement from Fuel today. New York's the best team in the league. They've got a monumental task ahead of them. Listen, when you got your back to the wall, Hex. This is why you always leave your opponent a way out, because when their back is to the wall, they yeah. got nowhere to go. I know, I learned- They've got nowhere to go. Learned that against a raccoon once. You do not <laughs> want to corner a raccoon, nor do you want you to corner- You lost to a trash panda? <laughs> uh, neither of us really won. <laughs> I'll just say that. You don't want to corner a seagull either. It can be very aggressive birds, always stealing bags of chips at the beach. We'll see what they have in store for us here today. Yeah, so obviously, roster lineup's a little bit different. I think it's smart DPS-wise, too. They put in their two best DPS players. Like, it's rascal in effect for their best DPS players players. AKM's good. I think we'll probably see him later today uh, as rosters go and change, but this is how we're going to kick it off here on Hanamura. NYXL. I don't know if they're going to stay with this. I really doubt it, but why not? The Crabs NYXL, you know, they're going to toy with them for a little bit and see how things go. Yeah, Mano is going to be switching over, so we will not, in fact, have triple DPS running into this lineup immediately here, but New York XL on the attack. It will be Libero shooting the arrows at his brother, the monster. Yeah, we saw a little bit of Hanzo earlier. Jake pulled it out on this exact point. This is the reason. You can climb up here, you get a lot of good information, and then you just you can whittle down these targets, and it allows your Tracer to just go pick people off for free. I like that. You can tell just how low Libero's sense is with how long it took him to actually swivel around and try to get his aim going on Rascal there. But the defense currently getting poked and prodded and Sabio will be exactly where he wants to be. He's so close to hitting that shot on Rascal. That would have been terrific. So that Rascal will survive just a little bit longer and Libero not quite going to get the scatter arrow to connect there. Try to a little bit of a back cap to move them out of position. This has been a weird fight. It's taken so long. It's been bloodless so far. Libero has a dragon. Might just launch it across the point here. And there you go. Sure enough, Hex, it's almost as if you could see the future. Crazy thoughts that will force them off of the point. So we will have some progress getting made here for New York as Sevilla has basically just set up camp on the point right now. Just feeling perfectly at home. Tanks moving in as well. And they will have a few kills here to finally start things off for New York Excel. The defense they held for quite some time. But they will get overwhelmed in the end. A yeah, very passive play from the defense. Eventually, it just felt like an inevitability that New York was going to be able to go. And they never really pressured Libero. He just sat up there all alone as Hanzo, which is always a good feeling when you're on a sniper hero. Dallas, it seemed like just giving up that point. They're going to have a lot of ultimates to work with on second. Look, first point, Hanamura, you're not really going to defend very long in often situations. Yeah. Hanamura is all about second point. A lot of teams have really struggled to be able to take last in Hanamura. Look at that. I mean, one thing that Dallas have to work with here is quite a few bolts. Instead of throwing them away in the fight, the defense, I mean, they cracked so quickly that now they have quite a few ults to throw into this second point defense. So it's going to be a matter of when Dallas decided to pull the trigger. And there we go. Nano boost onto Mickey. He manages to crush Sabiobi. This is pretty solid work. That is going to delay things here for the New York XL. Yeah, Sabiobi out of this fight. They're going to have to just straight up back up. There goes Mono on his exit. And the nice thing is that Dallas didn't really have to commit a whole lot beyond that nano boost into it. And Cuss is going to get that healing going on going forward. It's very likely that any chip damage comes is going to be prioritized. That chips keep your orbs to yourself. Let Custa gain all that healing again to get him towards his next ultimate. Coming into this map, New York XL has not lost Hanamura. To see what they have up their sleeves that no one else does, because this offense for Hanamura last has been a, a puzzle for several teams. Uh, I think we were talking about it earlier, Hex. Something about running headfirst into a wall over and over and over again, hoping that at some point you will manage to create some kind of gap to take advantage of. Not going to happen this time for the New York XL. However, they get completely wiped in the upper halls. Effective in chucking in the pulse bomb for good measure. Oh, we talk about it like it's so hard to get through that area, the hallway one, and then you get through the small hallway, and now you got to go up the stairs, and it just gets worse and harder. And now you're up the stairs, and maybe even if you came out even in that fight, now everyone's respawned down below, and you're just now in position that you want. It's just ridiculously difficult, Hanamura last. And this is the only strategy you see because even though how hard it is for the offense, it's still the best offensive strategy. Yeah, going straight up the gut, pretty difficult. Oh, Rascal. Dancing on the edge here. Oh, it's huge. Two quick kills right away. Yeah, this is exactly how you want. You get those big openings. You play it patient. The picks are there. Dallas Fuel kind of stumbling into the fire. Effects has to back off. 
Just trying to get topped up up here. He will get the orb from Chip Sand, and so he can kind of float around, but Libero's perfectly positioned, and he's nearly got the attack visor as well. That should be what clinches it here for New York XL, what should end it in the end. Five works a little bit of time. Visor is out, but he's shut down by Rascal. Beautiful play. Whoa, and that is canceled out. Libero not going to be too happy about that, especially after he bigged it up. Rascal beheads Ark with a quick dash through. Even looking for more here. If he can find the DMAC on Mecco, this would be big. A fantastic stagger. And Rascal bringing that all the way back. He had a nano boost on him, too. Just shows you how much healing Custis has been able to do, prioritizing large targets. It will nano boost the blade right there and completely cut it in half. However, all not for nothing. 75% of progress made for the offense. We're getting a bit of the replay here. This was when uh, Dallas were able to actually get some kills their way. Ah, self-destruct. Ark and Libero, nowhere to go. Yeah, really nice positioning there. There's really nowhere to hide from that. Just hits right on the edge. You saw him sneaking against the wall. And they just will eat it. That is something that you should be able to practice as well as Diva, right? Up in the hallway, get those angles down for a perfect self-destruct. Why not? Effect committing the pulse bomb. Not quite going to find the kill. Although, as I said, he did get the D-Mech on Mecco. Art getting forced back. And Effect has to play it safe. Stick with the units. Stick with the teams. Make sure your healers can top you up. And yet again, Dallas Fuel able to hold three minutes on the clock here for New York. You just have to be so perfect on the offense that anything like that simply stops a fight dead in its track. I mean, Pulse Bomb has ended more pushes on Hanamura last than have ever begun. So difficult to come in here. You just have to really bank ultimates and hope you get good trades early on. Exactly what New York did earlier that garnered, it gained them two ticks. They need one more push like that. They only need a third more, but they're pushing into a stack field team. Oh, Siegel, bit of a surprise. Definitely didn't expect all six of them to show up. And the trance will get forced out. That was one of the few ultimates that New York actually have to work with here for this push. And so it's out in the open. Save Yobi takes on chips though. So there's a big kill. And Rascal, he was patient, trying to outweigh the trance, gets punished by Libero. Dallas Fuel, will they be able to hold? And it's looking like for now they will. Mickey still with the primal, able to bat him around. It's just not clean enough. They got the first couple of kills that they needed, but losing one or two is just losing too much here on the last point of Hanamura. One of the reasons that I, I wouldn't hate seeing a Mercy in here, just so that you don't have to full reset if you lose one or two, you can bring that man advantage back. And you could also pair your Mercy up top with your Soldier 76, because that's a checkmate. That's the win condition you want, is 76 on the high ground. Most 76, and we're not talking about his rank or his account. <laughs> hey, Effect. It's a dirty word right now in this matchup. Yeah, 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 yeah that was a sick stick. Well, the fight continues definitely because New York is starting to feel a bit of the heat. Minute 45 left on the clock. Well, they are getting closer to those self to the uh, support ultimates, rather. Self-destruct is one of them. He's got it, Mecco. Oh, this is beautiful right now for New York. Dallas just wasted a ton of ultimates. What was that? They boosted. Rascal didn't have blade. They threw a transcend on top of it, and they, and they just backed out of the door. A zoning transcend. Yes, that's a joke. Yeah, and we've got the I mean, yes, it is a joke, but we've got the six-pack going as well here. For New York XL, Mano gets picked. Effect going to work. That's solid. There's still a real chance here for New York to push in if they wanted to. They have so much firepower now at their disposal. Libero with the attack visor. If he can just get up onto the high ground here, that would be big. They're going to wait for one more because they want to get their main tank back. That was Mono who died early in that fight. He's coming back in. They banked up most everything that they need here. Now what i like to see is maybe just open up the Primal Rage and knock that door down. Just Kool-Aid guy it right in there. And then you're making all the room in the world for Libero to finally set up on high ground. That's what they're waiting for. And sure enough, leading the charge straight in. Mano right behind him, self-destruct into the corner. Will be able to dodge it just in the nick of time. Meko does find Chip Saiyan in the mix. And there you go, Libero finally on the high ground. But Siegel was there to eat up some of that ultimate with the D-Matrix. And the charge using his body to get in the way as well. Libero not quite going to find it fast enough. Mickey with the primal staying alive. They've made so much progress though. New York XL, they're right on the edge of locking this down. But Dallas Fuel still trying to hang in here. That's a beautiful sound barrier to keep everyone alive. Just clutched at the end. This is Libero where exactly he wants to be in the checkmate position. They will get people on the point. Only the tanks on the point, but that is enough. And one of the few teams today but able to complete Hanamura. NYXL, they just... They finally just banked and banked and banked after getting smacked in the face several times going through those stairs. Diva up top, and I really like the Libero. Kind of threw him a little bit of a curveball. He went top right with that tactical visor. Usually it's that center high ground there, so they weren't necessarily in position to get full value of shutting him down. Siegel got there a little bit late, and then he saw the Primal Rage, tried to knock him off, missed that swing. Just enough to get Libero on the high ground. That, I mean, that's why you see it run. It's the best offense that's available on Hanamura. It's a slow approach, it's like a glacier, it's inexorable. Eventually you get ground down. 
We got the whole help of the ults as well there for New York. They're just looking so damn good right now. Mana looks bored. <laughs> I know. I mean, they, they, <laughs> really it looks bored. It, it, they just look like, oh, just another day was work. Clocking in. In the meantime, over on the Dallas Fuel side of things, Mickey, always positive. Well, you have to look at the swing. Effect, not so much. You have to look at what set up New York having such a giant ultimate advantage towards that last push. It was because some questionable ults came out from Dallas right beforehand. Boosting a Genji is great when he's got Blade. It's, it's fine-ish when he doesn't, but then you're not seeing Rascal be aggressive even though he was boosted. He didn't necessarily dash through the hallway, which is you expect because he's got more invulnerability on Nano Boost. Try to charge up that ultimate. And then they doubled down on that boost going on to Rascal, and they gave then Chips uses Transcend up top two. Those are ultimates that you'd like to have back. Chips also was the first victim of a lot of those early fights. Yes, he was, in fact. Getting picked fairly early on. Effect, oh well, we need to see if Effect is going to be able to step up his game here, go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He is hanging in there versus Sabiobi, but on the offense, that's how it can work. Now we're going to get things to switch around here. New York Excel will go on the defense. Libero on the Soldier to kick things off, holding back left. I like it. Or no, he's at top right right now on the balcony. But he can keep an eye on his support. So now Dallas Fuel, they're going to have to deal with a bit of crossfire going into this first point. Yeah, it's a great spot for a soldier because he can be so self-reliant. He's just going to drop his pack. He gets up there with a rocket jump, and then he's going to be able to kind of zone out where the rest of the team is, although they dive on him right away. Effective Rascal have already gotten Libra off the high ground. Ah, this is big, and they are just rolling in here. Mickey leading the charge with the help of Siegel, able to find the kill on Mono. Jonak, however, doing Jonak things. Snipes him, but there's two big kills. Mickey and Siegel working together. Very quick take here on point A for Dallas Fuel. This couldn't have gone better. Well, maybe Jonak doing what Jonak does. That is three kills for the madman on Zenyatta. Not over yet. He's looking for more. Okay, never mind. It's like the Spitfire. New York, you think they're done. You think they're out. You think it's a winnable situation for the opposition. And then one of these guys just goes ballistic and wipes out the entire team single-handedly. It's just unfair. It's just unfair. When I grow up, I want to be Jonak. That is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, he's up there as well with the final blows, the damage dealt. Might as well be a DPS. This has always been one of the game plans for New York, though. Make sure that Jonak gets the support, the boost, get him there. No mercy in play, but that still doesn't stop him from picking up kill after kill. He has been wiped out finally, however, and so Sibiobi is going to get in here, touch for a little bit. Should be getting some backup from Echo as well. There are still four players alive here for New York Excel, continuing this fight. And now it's a matter of whether or not Jonak's going to decide to commit the trance. Can he get back here in time? Because that could perhaps change things to Sibiobi. Just one clip's effect. Costa finally going to lay him low. Oh, some nice highlight plays there towards the end for New York. We'll give them the defense uh, a little bit longer than Dallas was able to hold out, but they ended up committing a little bit to this, and Custis is going to escort a couple people off the edge here. Yeah, that's a feel-good moment. If you're a Lucio, that's exactly what you're hoping for. So we move into it. Six minutes just shy for Dallas Fuel here to tie things up at 2-2. Two to two. No switches from their composition. They're going to try this Blade out first, then we might see Rascal switch into something else if it does not work out. I know in a little bit of trouble, but he's boosting. He's got Primal Rage, so that's just the illusion of trouble. He's actually fine. Yeah, he's boosting. <laughs> he's doing his thing. How many times are you going to try to fit boosted into the broadcast today? <laughs> We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Right now, two big kills coming through, though. Jonak finally decides to use that Transcendence, just hoping to be able to keep his tanks alive on the high ground, and he does a perfect job of it. Great positioning. A little bit of stagger there on Mickey as well to slow things down for the fuel. And while they get to kind of... New York really just gets to admire the architecture. Oh, and Rascal will go for the switch, too. He was only staying on the Genji because he had Blade up, so he was going to pop it. Now they're going to go into the tried and true, or at least tested, and true composition of a Soldier 76. In previous iterations of the Dallas Fuel, oh. there's been AKM on it. Oh, and then he gets the stick as well. You know, this New York team's so funny because we talk so much about, like, Sabiobi and Jonak, and then, like, the forgotten guys are still one of the best DPS and supports in the league, and Ark and Libero. It's ridiculous. It's an embarrassment of riches for New York. Uh, that is why they're sitting at the top of the pack, the undisputed kings of Overwatch League. Sibiobi, though, still trying to keep it alive here on the side. Poke it, making sure that they're not on that high ground. That dips in real quick to get a kill with Mono. But right now, there is progress. Great progress being made here by Dallas Fuel. Finally, they managed to contest, and it's about this time where Mono decides to go primal. Start really throwing some punches here, getting that 1,000 HP. Going to make him a difficult target to kick. But the self-destruct out in the open 
will force them off, and some more progress being made. Two ticks here for Dallas Fuel, moving on to a third. Both tanks back. Libero's gonna look for something here, though. He gets booped away momentarily, still looking for Custo. Will find it there, and that should be the defense holding on. Despite two ticks, that is that's exactly how New York put their offense together, though. They got in early on, got themselves a couple ticks. It's a lot easier to get that third. Oh, Seagull with some fancy footwork. Oh, like body Libero block off the edge. Body block there from Libero. Turns out he's a bouncer in his spare time. End of the night after work. We find him at the bar. Nope. Sorry, you can't get in. Or out. In this yeah, case. Or, or you're, you're stuck inside the bar. <laughs> Somehow more horrifying. Ark's gonna have Nano Boost ready. You'd have to imagine the target for that will be Mono if they're gonna use it just to zone out here. Ark's gonna live first, so he's getting pressured. He does end up getting the boost off on Mono across the map. Chips goes down first and. Dallas might want to just completely rethink even trying to go in here. They've just got an ultimate out. That's decent enough for them. They have to wait for chips. I mean, Transcend has been one of the ways to get through this doorway. Exactly. You can just move through. It doesn't matter if they've got a junk. doesn't matter if they're just spamming you. Move through with the trance. Keep everybody alive and healthy. And get that high ground going for yourself. And really, now what do they have to work with? Jonak isn't too far away from his Transcendence. About 9% now. And Livero is close to the blade. Yeah, they're going to Primal Rage up during this too, very likely. Rascal's just going to try to walk straight up. Exact same tactics coming through on the other side. I wonder if Mano's Primal Rage comes out. There it does. Keep himself knock. alive. He messed up his jump pack. Got caught in the corner there. Decides to go Primal just to stay alive. That could give an opportunity here for the Fuel to end this. Rascal now with the Tac Visor dancing on the edge, but he's only got a big beefy target to go after, and that's not ideal. Not a whole lot of damage getting done. The Trance is there to cancel this out. Now it's Chip Sand deciding, I need to keep my teammates alive. I need to commit my ult. Libero's in trouble. Jonak goes down as Mickey's able to get him in the back line. There goes Libero. They're all 6v4. They're going to double down. Sound Barrier out as well. Throwing everything into the mix here, Dallas Fuel. They know that there's close three ticks. That's what they're looking for. They've got two of them so far. A couple minutes left to make it happen as well. And the delayed kill on Mono. Save Yolby is gone. And Dallas Fuel, it's Libero with the reflect, but it's not going to be enough. Dallas Fuel getting the job done. Two to two, and much quicker much than New York quicker. as well. Yeah, they're able to crack that defense, got set up exactly where they wanted to be, early, early force out of the primal rage. And you know, we talked about the unorthodox kind of tank composition that they're running here. No one's truly a main tank. Mickey is stepping in the role, and I can tell you Mickey's doing well because we haven't said his name. It's exactly like an offensive lineman well, we in football. Have cursed him? Well, yeah, not yet. Well, I probably just did. But if you don't, if you're not saying a guy's name, I mean, he's not making mistakes, just doing his job, not dying first too often. And so far, the experiment of putting Mickey onto main tank has worked, at least for this map anyway. And I think, you know, transitioning from D.Va to Winston, it's different, but it's not super different. You know when to engage, when to get out. You still have the verticality, you still have escapes a little bit. You know, the, the defense matrix doesn't last very long. It either does a Winston bubble. So the timings aren't that far off, but it is definitely a transition he has to make. Oh, Mickey's got that positive attitude, which is worth, you know, its weight in gold, essentially, where he never really seems to say die. He's never really giving up. So that's the kind of team mates that you need right now on Dallas, considering they have been struck fairly low here at the end of stage two. You need somebody who's going to try and keep everybody motivated. You know, I, I saw them out the other night. They all did seem like in very good spirits. So it seems like the outside world has not influenced them too rough. They're not too hard on themselves. And Mickey's just a, a ball of fun wherever he is. Wow. Ah, that's it. Well, let's get into it now because Dallas Fuel will be on the defense. The onus is on New York Excel now to come up with a big win here and pick up this point A within 50 seconds. Not a whole lot of time to work with. And so they're going to have to make this push count. Dallas Fuel showed them how it's done when they were on the offense. So New York. What is going on? Rascal just decides to leap in there. No dash either. And they decide to pounce on that New York Excel. See that as their opening. Well, they do end up losing a couple trades. Will favor the offense in this scenario because of the walk back time here on Hana. But they're making good trades. Arc, Mako, and both tanks down as well. And actually, trades are not going to favor them because they only really have the one push. They got to back out. Libero has to wait for reinforcements. Oh, this is big here. New York Excel, yeah, what are you going to do? You got 10 seconds. Libero might have to dash on there just to keep this alive. Although Mono will be able to get onto the point. Start making a little bit of progress here. But there are four players ready and waiting to greet him from the Dallas Fuel. Never mind, Jonak gets the snipe on Chip Saiyan yet again. Effect dangerously low as well. And Rascal decides it's time to whip out the blade and start chopping him to bits. He will be able to find a big BB target. The D-Mech would have been big, but Libero there to cancel him out. You never really want to spend time in a Dragon Blade having to have the deflect up. It's a defensive ability, not exactly what you want. And New York will pull this off. 
can gain a little bit of extension here. 30 seconds added to the clock as they try to take last. Now going forward, they can transcend and blade onto this. That's all they're gonna have to work with. And self-destruct should come up online unless Mako gets demacked early. Well, actually, Mako is demacked, sorry. He's trying to find his back. Okay, so that should actually come online. He should get a mech soon. It charges very quick passive. Well, you know, he's just walking around right now with his little clicker, just trying to get the, the horn, right? You know, trying to see the lights flashing. Oh, that's where I left That's it. where I left my mech. That's where I left my mech. Okay, he found it. It's good. He's on his way home now. Don't worry. It is going to be them getting onto this B point. Now, overtime's a burn in, and there we go. Livero sees his opening, misses his dash. Rascal's going to be able to get out, but he's out of position. And so Livero decides that's good enough. He's going to go for the follow up on Siegel instead. It has to. The sub instruct actually comes up over behind the point. That's going to force the supports to sit far back. New York will at least get two ticks. Looking for more. Oh, Trance is there. That's a huge one there from Chip Saiyan, though. Custa somehow gets out of the radius, however, and gets clipped by Libero. Sebyomi will obviously find Chip Saiyan. And now things are going to get hairy here for Dallas Fuel. It's the two tanks. Yes, they're still here, but with focused fire, they can get melted so quickly. Yeah, two tanks, no supports, and those tanks are going to be able to do enough damage to get the crucial kill they need. New York always finds a way. Just clutch it out. I am still a little bit confused, Dallas's support line, though. And I'm sure there is reasoning for it about when they need to switch from Lucio to something else, and maybe that's why Cust is doing it, but if you ask people what Chip's best hero is, people would say Ana. Yeah. If you ask people what Custa's best hero is, people would say Zenyatta. And they're both playing the other one's best hero. Can you explain this reasoning? I can't, can't. No, not necessarily. I really can't. I think it's because Custa's the better Lucio. Um, Chips had never really had to play Lucio, especially when he was playing with Harry Hook. Mm -hmm. So Harry would be on Lucio, then sometimes switch off to something else. So maybe they just don't want Chips to have to switch. You don't necessarily always want to be doing a constant ballet of your supports, because I don't know if he does, but like support ultimates are really important in Overwatch. <laughs> so you don't really want to Tell switch me off more. of it. Yeah, sorry. Education. Educational stream, guys. <laughs> yeah, just looking out. I mean, yes, the support hey, alts. We got to flip this stream back from, from Puckett's R-rated version. This is where the tough thing is for Chip Sion, though, because, again, we keep seeing him. It's almost as if he gets caught out of position by someone, he dies, and that's like the go signal for New York Excel to just start pushing through. We saw it happen on point A, point B. It really does seem like right now Chips needs to get his head wired you know, wired straight yeah. on the positioning so that he stops getting picked first. Yeah, I mean, it's not always on the person getting picked as well. So they're running this dive composition. There's really no DPS back there to help him. And with the newish tank line, Who's really protecting Chips in this situation? Custa's got a boop, that's it. Well, start thinking this is a game of poker and start protecting your Chips. Because <laughs> you're going to need them. You're going to need them. Well, now it's going to change it over. Yeah, I know. That was a low one. All right, Dallas Fuel. They're on the offense now. They've got a minute, well, two minutes and a half to get the job done. Siegel launches himself in. Kind of dancing around. He's on the high ground, right? That's why you can't see him quite yet. Effects, however, kind of poking around, looking for an opening. He will bump into Saviolbi. Saviolbi, of course, going to be more than happy to greet him. Two ships in the night right there, though. Mano is trying to get back to his supports to help him out, as most supports have taken refuge in this small back room lately, but they lose two very quickly. A D-Mech will come onto Seagull. If they can get a kill here off of that, they might be able to bring this back. Oh. That should just about seal it. Sick work. There we go. Now, in fact, he gets to run rampant. Looking for the follow-up. Not going to get it. Gets robbed by Siegel for shame. But in fact, now, can he get into the flank position here? Yep, blink right up onto the high ground. Now he's got his pulse. He could look for those spawning, those respawning supports in the back line. Well, the supports are not hard to find on second point of Hanamura. They're in the back corners. And they're always right here. There it is. That actually forced it, though, didn't it? No, not quite. They are going to be able to dodge it. Look for a second there, like Jonex was raising his arms in prayer and that the trance was out, but wasn't even ready yet. And that is actually going to be Chip Saiyan getting his trance forced. Trade one for one, both of the tanks. Blade low. And while well, Rascal now has the blade as well, so we'll see. Can he actually spot out a juicy target here? Jonak has not got trance yet. Ready to cancel this out. Sebiobi trying to give him a butt to the face, though. This one's over. I mean, it's not so much that you force the trance out, it's where you force the trance out. By the time they're in a position to even use it on this last point, it's already faded. It's it's probably the biggest reason why Hanamura is so difficult on second point. It's because it's big. This is an enormous room that once you get in, you've had to use ults just to get an opportunity to continue fighting. So it's really so much about economy that makes offenses successful on Hanamura. Following Sebiobi's point of view, he is really the man to watch. He's always going to be looking for that hamstring move. 
Keeping an eye on that back line. Rascal's on the high ground now, so he's been spotted out. Rascal with the blade, and there we go. The initiation, and it's perfect. Costa gets eviscerated immediately. There's Sibyobi with a stick on Mickey, and they are done. Dallas Fuel, before they can even get in through. It, that's the perfect highlight there, Hex, what you've been talking about this entire time, trying to make it through those po those choke points. Right. It, that's what can happen. Well, let's see in the swing back on the other way now. Because they just got pulse bomb, because they just got eaten up a little bit, Dallas will have a bunch of alts, but New York did a great thing there. They only used the pulse bomb to absolutely clean it up. Pulse bomb and dash through from the DPS up top. Dallas going to be loaded up as well, except for that transcendence that was forced out earlier. I'd imagine Chips would love to have that. They might have to barrier just to get in and then hope that Chips can get a transcendence during the fight. It's very possible at 75%, in fact, probably. Uh, if he gets that Discord on a tank, or not the Discord, the Harmony Orb on a tank to start healing. Well, here we go. Libero's gonna just dash right into the mix. Chips the hit, not gonna get the chance. Removed immediately. The back line is dead yet again. Single with the parting gift there. The self-destruct that takes out Libero, but the damage is done. There's not gonna be any staying power here for Dallas Fuel on this B point. Yeah, Seagull teaching Libero how to fly one right to the moon up there. Let me know if you're running any Teslas on the way up. But it is just too much for New York. They're gonna come back. But the initiation there, New York wasn't going to let Dallas set up and do whatever they wanted. They took the fight to them, and that's why they're going to win Hanamura. New York showing just a methodical game, patient, and really demonstrating why they are sitting as the top dogs in the league right now. And well, one map more to extend their ter terrific lead. In fact, these guys are bonkers in terms of map lead. Going into the playoffs, they are feeling very good. Hanamura, more than anything else, is all about economics. And when you're even on economies right there, oftentimes the initiating force is the one that comes out on top. That's why you saw New York take it to them. You can't use alts when you're dead. And Libero escorted them gingerly to spawn. Come on, come on. Looking there for him. There we go. Yeah, come on. Getting the hype going. Love that we actually got some sleeps here as well. Rascal, take a nap while we go to break. And we'll be right back for map two. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network.
This is the moment we've all been looking forward to. New York, Seoul, it happens here in week four. We should expect an absolute firecracker of a match. Well, 일단은 서울이 이번 그거 스테이지에 한 번도 안 졌어서 저희가 이기면 이제 이번 스테이지도 1등 가져갈 수 있는 기회였고 그리고 또 약간 라이벌 의식 같은 게 조금 있어서 서울 상대로. Going to go in here. Decides that Zumba might be the optimal target. There, a slash through. It is a nasty. Oh, Libero! It's five kills. 딱 나눔을 받자마자 이거는 대박 날 거라고 딱 생각이 들었어요. 그냥 너무 좋은 각도여가지고 좋은 구도여서. Plato hoping to set up on the high ground. It doesn't work. It's a sleep dart from Mark. Perfect shot down there. 엄청 멀리서 아나로 이제 아크가 솔직 궁을 재웠는데 그건 누가 봐도 뽀록이죠. 그러니까 그거는 말이 안 돼. 그냥. An incredible. Map number one as New York barely come out on top. Recall comes out from Saviorbi, but he pops up right in front of Fletcher. That's perfect timing from Zumba. It couldn't have been any more perfect. Advantage Seoul, two to one. New York must win escort to stay in the series and take it to a map five. 뭐 그냥 다를 게 없죠. 지고 있어도 이대 일로 지고 있었는데 이제 우리한테는 한 번의 기회가 있는 거고 걔네한테는 두 번의 기회가 있는 거잖아. 뭐 단지 그거. 그냥 몇 판. 계속 새로운 게임 하는 거다라고 생각하면서 정말 나는 미스. 지금이 첫 게임이다 하고 생각하고 첫 판을 이긴다 생각으로 한 겁니다. These two teams are going to go all 12 rounds in the boxing ring slugging it out. Toby's down. Jay Hawk's down. Libero running Ryan. Both supports are down. We get ourselves a map five. This is what we wanted. Everything's going the right way for the New York Excelsior. NYXL take the series three to two. The victor in this epic matchup. We're in Changi. Now, like, that. We're just now. New York team is still running. So, we're just going to have to win. We're going to Changi. NYXL and Seoul, their first loss of the stage in this epic matchup. All right, thank you so much for, well, for being patient and actually going through the break to enjoy that with us. I was been on autopilot there for a second, so I was thinking about this man in question, Jonak. He's on our screen right now. We didn't have him in that panel, but he is definitely one of the linchpins for New York going forward in this uh, season. And you look at Hana right there, and Dallas does everything that they need to do on their attack. They jump in, they kill nearly everything except for a Tracer and a Zenyatta. It just so happens that that Tracer and then Zenyatta ends up being Say Biobi, and then Jonak just kills four people. Yeah. Like, I, how do you even plan around that? Said, Guys, we, it's a 6v2 now. Oh, it's a 2v2 now. It's a 2v2. Like, what happened? And you still have Jonak and Say Biobi there to wreck yeah, you. It's ridiculous. And that just fought all the time. But I mean, as well as, you know, being able to withstand the attacks, then Jonak is always chiming in with those volleys. He's got an uncanny ability to just find that pick on a squishy target to start yeah. things off. Chip said, I'm pretty sure he took orbs to the face several times that first map. Well, a lot of people were trying to figure out Jonak. They're like, oh, no, he's only that good because he's always getting damage boosted by the Mercy. I mean, he's always getting damage boosted. <laughs> yeah. Well, where's your god now, folks? There was no Mercy damage boosting him. He simply hits heads. Dude, he nearly, he did, he did nearly 11,000 damage without a Mercy damage boost. Yeah, that's it. Like, come at me, fam. Chip Saiyan is at 8.5, and he died twice as many times. I mean, Chip Saiyan was keeping up in terms of damage, but yeah. really, in terms of final blows, Jonak just, he stands out. And then you still get, you know, the Libero. You still get the save Yobi. Yeah, well, New York, they have it all. We're going to go over to Li Zhang Tower now, my favorite map in the entire game. And we'll see what kind of compositions come out, because this map is very strange as far as outliers go. Control Center is going to be the map we start on first, but when we get to either Night Market or Garden, you can see different stuff here too. A little bit surprising, no substitutions for either side. I'm actually mostly surprised that Dallas is not bringing an AKM, who's been an ace on this map, because when you get to Night Market, 76 is good, and when you're on Garden, also the Fara is good. So AKM has been playing both of those, but I feel like they're, they're perhaps comfortable in something else. On Control Center, last time Dallas is on here, they got spawn camp for 99% of the map. Then they switched over and Rascal played a May and they had all sorts of weird stuff going on. So I'm just looking forward to what kind of lineup they're gonna Listen, run. There, there's weird and then there's Symmetra. Oh. Don't worry, we're not going Symmetra weird. <laughs> hey, we're not going that on, way. Man. We're not going that way. We've got Dallas Fuel. Mickey's changed it up. He's got the hog and effect is gonna start off with the Reaper Rascal on the May. So an unconventional approach here from Dallas Fuel and I'm excited to see it because New York Excel are definitely raring to go. Boosted straight into the fight, wasting no time at all. And there's the hook on a Mickey. Oh, the kick he things off. Yeah, he gets the hook, but he hooks a hog that was living in the matrix right there, so no damage coming through. Both teams gonna rotate around now. 
and they have to be really, really weary of these walls. May is a map editor. She's going to put up walls, and Effect is going to crush people against them. This is exactly it. Chip Cyan gets the DMAC, but he definitely had the help from the team as those big tanks getting cut off from the back line, cut off from the healers. You can't even get the freeze going. Rascal eliminates Saviobi. And Dallas Fuel now will be the first ones to pick up progress on the point here. Oh, oh that's, that's nasty. That's nasty. Where are you going? Where are you going? To spawn. That's where you're going. Effect. <laughs> the, the Reaper May combo is so smart here. I mean, you just put up walls, and Reaper's really good in closed spaces. And even though the map in general is closed spaces, why not just make more small spaces? That's exactly what the map editor in May does. She's getting buffed soon, too, so we could definitely be seeing more May. There it is again! Oh, it was perfectly timed. So you're just sitting there thinking, oh, New York, great. They got the death ball. They moved through together. Guess what? Both of your tanks are dead. You got nothing there to absorb the damage now. Nothing there to absorb the hurt. Saviobi has swapped. He's got the McCree now in play. But I don't think right. that actually makes any difference. It's the right swap because McCree is a very good Reaper counter. He can do good against May, force her into the ice block or flash and fan her before. Well, I mean, he wouldn't fan her. I'd fan her. But flash and shoot her before she can get ice block up. And so the wall continues to go through, and this looks like a completely different Dallas team than last time they were out in this stage. Uh-oh! Instant deletion there. Libero gone before his tank can get the shield in place. Mono overwhelmed eventually by Siegel. Things shaping up very nicely here for the Dallas Fuel. They're about to cross 70% on this point, and New York haven't set foot on that point since the very beginning of this map. Check your corners, there's always a Reaper there, always that demon in the closet that you're trying to keep under wraps. He comes up and lets everyone know he's there. They shut it down pretty well, but the damage had already been done. And now New York's just gotta throw everything they have at this one. They're gonna have a tire, they're gonna have a barrier up soon, but the problem is, they need to speed through here. They only get half the team through again! Libero just can't seem to make it through here alive in one piece. The self-destruct is there. That's gonna be funny because it's not gonna catch anybody at all. And there's the whole hog, forcing him back into spawn yet again. Saviobi will cancel it out with the flash, but the damage is done. It will be Ark all the way back on point, nearly flips it solo. So now it's about Dallas keeping it together here. Now they need to just deliver the fatal blow. Well, I mean, this is all over. This is a pretty little lighthouse on the point, but that's all about it. Maybe this tire can get something. Finally, Rascal's dead. It's got to feel like a small victory. That's a feel-good moment for Libero. Hey, but it's not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. 100% gain for Dallas Fuel. They take the lead here on control, 1-0. Dallas looked great there. And I'm sorry, Dallas fans, for what I'm about to do to you. Because oh, sure. Control Center is completely different than the other two maps. That strategy is not necessarily going to work outside of Control Center. I can see them trying it, maybe, on Garden. If you get control of it, you can lock them in the door. But there's also better ways around. So that is a one-off strategy that worked brilliantly, well done, and they put themselves in position to win this map. But things are much more wide open as we go to Night Market and we go to Garden that Dallas is going to have to have another strategy in their pocket to work with. And it looks like both teams just want to come out the gate with pure old dive. Yeah, mirroring each other. So nothing clever coming in here from Dallas Fuel to hope to catch New York off guard. They're really going to have to get it done the difficult way, the hard way. Mono and Mono. And well, Mono kind of dancing around the edge there. Seagull looking for a little bit there. And right now, it's just battle of positioning. Neither team really wants to step just on the point right yet. You gotta be careful when you're hanging out on the edge here to not get knocked off by Siegel. He can boost in through there anytime. Oh, well, this is a big one. Jonak and Libero gone. That's making an effect working together as a duo. Excellent work there. Dallas Fuel may be able to pull out ahead. And yes, yeah, sure enough, Mono's been forced back to spawn Ark as well. And New York, once again, find themselves having on the outside, having to figure out a way to get this point back under control for themselves. The good thing for New York is that Dallas is not running heavy tank compositions so that they will be able to get back in. Dive is not able to hold as strong on this point as others are. Chips and Rascal fall. It's the exact opposite of who fell for New York last fight. So 6v4. 6v4. Now, well, you're going to have effect. Kind of dancing. He could try to go for the hero play here. He will have pulse in just a moment. That opens it up for Custa to get in there. But Custa gets obliterated immediately. Effect follows suit. And New York Excel will flip the point. This time around, Dallas Field not able to, not able to make that much progress. Only 26% on the board for him. I'm just going to hang out back. Jonak's going to be looking for volley. Is wonder where Saviobi is going to be lurking. It's a decent map to go for a flank for the Tracer and try to get in there and just drop a bomb. And I believe that's exactly where Saviobi is. He's trying to come up on top. He knows they're below him now, but there's no good angle to come in. Not quite. 
And well, it looks like Dallas Fuel, they've sent ahead their scout. Effect is going to be wrapping on the other point, so he's going to be trying to find them out of position. But right now, they're doing a good job of sticking together. Mecco is there to make sure that Jonak and Ark are not going to go up in a fiery explosion. And sure enough, the D-Matrix canceling that one out. Effect not going to get anything out of that pulse. Save Yobi gets the stick, but nothing there either. It is still going to be New York XL, however. Just the old-fashioned damage getting the kills. And the problem is it took Dallas a really long time to set that one up, too. They went the really long way around the map, went through Major Pack, came on through the other side, and still were unable to get anything. They didn't even really get a whole lot out of New York. You at least want to drain some ultimates. Transcend came out, which is nice. That means Dallas will have the support ultimate advantage coming in. They can choose it at their leisure. I think you barrier in, then when everyone's fighting on the point, that's when you transcend. It should give you enough an advantage to win a fight. There's the barrier. Now there's the barrier to kick things off. And Mano has to go primal to stay alive. So now it's a matter of him trying to maximize the results. He is going to try and pancake someone. Not quite going to find that kill, unfortunately for him. But he is zoning out. Custa, get out of this point. It is going to be Libero still dancing around, looking for an angle here with the Dragon Blade. They're being very patient about this still, but there we go. Decides to take it. Chip's hand with no chance to keep himself alive. Libero gets to run game on them. Nowhere to hide, three kills, and that is certainly gonna be New York holding on this point, unless Rascal can come up with the magic here. Blade of his own, both supports dead. Rascal's got a couple of his very dangerous gambit by New York because they gave up control of that point during that fight, thinking they were gonna be able to take it back. Now, even though Dallas is swinging the fight back in their favor, and New York took control of it. They've been juggling it back and forth, but New York expected to win that fight through the end. A beautiful blade by Rascal. Other plans for New York about one fight away, but no check marks on the board for either side. Well, Mickey's got primal. Mickey just gets that primal, yeah. But as far as Rascal's concerned, man, this is that firepower right now paying off for Dallas Fuel. Letting Rascal play affects both of them working together. Mickey just goes charging in, looking to bat them off the side. Can he manage it? Not quite. Unfortunately for him, Ark able to stay on the walls, stay alive. So Mickey has to kind of ponder the meaning of life for a moment here, wonder what does he do now? Well, he dies. <laughs> he gets collapsed on immediately. That's really the first time today I think Mickey has shown his greatness on the Winston. It's, it doesn't look mechanically demanding, but Winston's mechanically clunky. It, it's very difficult to handle, to use well, to hit your bunch, to hit your punches, to hit your jump packs right. You saw him stutter a little bit there. And it's, you know, it's like driving an old truck with a manual transmission. You have to know it. You have to know how it works to really be able to figure it out. Hex, we're in America. They don't know what manual transmission is here. <laughs> Come on. Just, just, just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there. Automatic, baby. Automatic. <laughs> I can drive manual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can ride in on the other side of the pond. Save Yobi. Looking for it, Rascal with the blade of his own this time around, not quite getting the same effect out of it. Oh! And then with the boop on the side, Mecco and Jonak out of it. Already, the sail, the barrier has been thrown in here by Custa as well, just to make sure that his teammates stay alive. You still have Libro with the blade, looking to find something out of it. Unfortunately for him, he's dancing on the edge. He's getting topped up, but not for long. And Rascal still looking for, well, one of the most difficult targets to kill in the game. That could be a map-winning play from Custa. And they were, are able to finally track down Ark. It is all over but the crying. And Dallas will take themselves a map up at New York. There we go. No clean sweep. Dallas Fuel, they came in with the game plan. It worked out perfectly. Getting that lead 1-0. And then going toe-to-toe -to -toe on dive. Not even having to come up with anything clever, just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dive and just taking the fight to New York. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, Custa probably the more comfortable Lucio. Shows it there. That's a game and map winning. Touch, knock off the edge. And let's forget about clean sweep. Dallas still has a chance to pull a huge upset against NYXL. Go to halftime. See you on the other side. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League.
We got a new lineup and new energy for the Dallas Fuel as they are able to tie things up one apiece by stealing that control in game number two. Incredible stuff so far. It's been an insane day. If you're just joining us, Houston upset Seoul. Now we have another potential series where the underdog could walk away the victor. Game number one. That's where we started, boys. We got Fred and Sideshow to break down the action for us. And we started off on Hanamura. I was expecting this to be all New York XL. Knowing that you don't have your consistent main tank in the mix for Dallas, well, New York should be able to run through them. There Instead, is, yeah. this was a very tight series, boys. There is no way that I would have believed the performance I've seen out of Dallas Fuel with two brand new tanks who have never played the roles before, as far as we remember. And then uh, Rascal, who's only just stepped in, and how abominable they looked at the beginning. It's honestly and, ridiculous. And this was so good coming out from there. Uh, uh, all around, the general step up is is honestly unprecedented, I think, in Overwatch, to be honest. I've never seen it on this kind of level from a team going from uh, this to that, from last week to this week that we're seeing right now. Dallas have definitely stepped up massively. They didn't manage to take out this first map on Hanamura. But, I will say that, yeah. but they were looking a lot better. Now, yeah. New York ended up essentially winning this map from a, from a massive clutch play in the time back at the tail end of the map. You can see here, it was a double overtime push on both the first point and the second point. It's essentially raw mechanical skills. Say by Obi clutching out of his mind. Uh, all around working out for them, but again, very capable, you know, alternative universe here. We could have been seeing, you know, Dallas yeah. Fuel 2-0 up. It's it's kind of crazy. Be real with me, though. Josh. How close was that game one in your eyes? I think that Dallas Fuel played better Overwatch for at least the first half, maybe the first two thirds. It sounds ridiculous, but I think that that's almost what it was. And then New York XL, they had only a minute left. And this is where true greatness shines, right? Because as much as you can say, yeah, the first half Dallas Fuel were playing better, but when when it came to the crunch time, NYXL just rolled it through right. with only a minute left. So they deserved the map win. That cannot be taken away from them. But Dallas Fuel do look a lot stronger than they did before. They're the number one team for a reason. New York strikes first, but Dallas comes right back and wins a game two that I, I was pretty amazed by here, guys. <laughs> Let's take a look at the numbers. We can get to around three. As you see the highlights play, talk me through how Dallas is getting the win because in control, it's not just individual skill, but these guys seem to shine in roles we're not used to watching them in. Yep, it's the May Reaper strategy. It's back. It was mid-2016 the last time we saw this come out, <laughs> but it's Rascal's pocket pick. We know that Effect is an incredible aimer, and you it allows Mickey and Seagull to play both of the off-tanks. This is a beautiful yeah, I composition. It. I love it so much, and it works so well onto Li Shang Tower, and it's like it's almost like a forgotten composition. You know, They brought out the ancient tombs up the back, you know? <laughs> oh, red, red open. Oh, yeah, 2016. That year existed, you know? They start, suddenly started to remember what they could and can't run, and it worked beautifully. You know, it, it definitely filled in the gaps as well. The fact that they could run Mickey on the Roadhog and Siegel on the Diva. Two roles have been practicing, so they didn't have to rely too much on the Mickey main tank. Uh, a role that he is going to be a little bit uncomfortable for on. And then in the second round, this one here, they just end up running this classic dive composition. So what you're going to be seeing in 99% of your games pretty much at the moment, the Genji, the Zenyatta, the Lucio, the Winston, the Diva, the Tracer. Super high mobility, and they, they still do well. It's those fundamentals, and that's what I'm most impressed with, is the fact that they're still playing well, not running these cheese compositions that you could say. The fact right. that they're just running these normal comps and they're doing well with it. It's, it's very promising. No Bastion needed. All right, Josh, let's get the second half prediction here. Bren's been picking the underdog all day. <laughs> Does Dallas have a chance in the remaining maps? Knowing where we're going in game three, it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood and then Gibraltar are the next two maps. And they're very dive focused but you can play a lot of Widowmaker on Hollywood and Gibraltar. So maybe if they have effect set up in that kind of position and play a Widowmaker Genji kind of comp, the, the issue for me is how deep does their map pool go? Right. They're only just starting to work together as a team. Maybe they focused so much on Hanamura and Control that they're going to start to slip behind. I think they've got potential, but New York XL have got the caliber and the history. Yeah, we know New York. They take a little bit to wake up sometimes, but then they can just roll through you in the second half. If you're a Dallas fan, though, we have one more thing to show you. Last week, when we checked in with the squad, we wanted to hear their communication. It was abysmal. It was a mess. This week, it sounded much better. Here's a look from the comms during game number one. Left, if you want they have trans. They have trans beat. Yeah, no, uh, trans, no beat. They have trans on. Okay, okay. okay. Trans off, no, beat off. I'm ready. Yes, yes. All right, Nano and Mickey, into them. Try and force trans. I'm ready. Okay, okay. I'm playing. No, no, go top left. Go, 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 go,
That's so clean. Like, that, that's the only thing you can say to that. That is crisp, clear communication. You compare that to last week, it was all over the yeah. place. The, the stars, really, in that, in that are going to be Custer, right? That yep. dude, clear voice, doing knows really exactly well. what he's calling, doing exactly what he needs. Rascal is being listened to. Before, Rascal wasn't being listened to at all. Now we're seeing it completely changed up. They've got a game plan in mind. They're executing the plays. Complete turnaround. And the fact that they've put so much on Rascal and he plays in the front line makes up for the fact that both of their tanks in that clip and historically for Dallas have been quite quiet. So now you have a guy in the front and a guy in the back. Going to make it very clean. Nice communication. Dallas has been in a swamp today. Will they be able to dig themselves out of it? We'll find out. Two more games to go. Don't go anywhere. When we return, it's New York. Dallas, second half, coming up next. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Sour Patch Kids. Sour, sweet, gone. Tied up one to one in this matchup between the Dallas Fuel and the NYXL. And gosh, I don't know what it is about these Texas teams today, but they are truly playing spoiler. Because guys, remember, NYXL, they need to win this match in order to punch their ticket into the stage playoffs this weekend. So uh, I don't know if the Dallas Fuel can do it. It looks like they're pretty strong. If the effect stays on Reaper, I guarantee they'll win this match because, you know, it's Reaper. That's my boy. Anyways, guys, we still have a whole other half to go. So let's get back into the action with our casters, similar How can you not dance to this music? It's upbeat, and you got Malik as well. I mean, dude, everything is so just great right now, Hex. Just great. So just. Well, everything is bigger in Texas, including the heart of the teams, apparently. I mean, it's been such an interesting come out from Dallas right now. Everyone expected this to be pretty one-sided. Dallas is having trouble. New York's the best team in the league, period. Yeah. End of story. Then to 2-0, give themselves a chance here. We are going to have some substitutions. This is Jonas coming in for Mano. Mm -hmm. Jonas for Mano, cool. Oh, 
dynamite inside. <laughs> more, more bait tanking, more tanking, you know, like, let's just get in there. Yeah. So just changing up on the tanks, this is what we do see from New York every now and again in terms of just, you know, swapping out of yeah. uh, the tanks. We're going to main tank. I'm a little more surprised that Dallas is not making any changes, but in the same vein, I'm not. I mean, use what's working. This is, I think, probably one of their strongest rosters overall. Yeah. Still trying to figure out main tank issues, but Mickey's not been a liability, which I think is all you can ask for in someone stepping into a brand new role like that. We know that Siegel's got one of the deepest pools in the game, and then I really do think, like, let's just put in our best DPS players. <laughs> and Taimu's been kind of a hit or miss and inconsistency. AKM is very, very good on soldiers. Some of the other heroes leave a little to be desired, so why pick up players if you're not going to play them? Effect and Rascal have come in, and they've looked great together. Listen, to me, that's the focus right now, what we've taken out of map one and two, but in, in particular, map two, is the little Rascal. I mean, the guy, he's everywhere. Hey, we need this pocket pick. Great, I can play May, no problem at all, and I can play May at a competitive level. Okay, now we're going to go into straight dive. Well, here's a world-class Genji for you that's just going to completely wreck your opponent's team. Like, Rascal right now is providing some one punch kind of hitting power there for Dallas Fuel that I think they really needed. Yeah, and it takes a lot of the pressure off of Effect, too. I mean, you, you saw in all stage one and even early yeah. stage two, Effect just felt like the world was on his shoulders. He was always getting frustrated, and now he doesn't have to do it all by himself. Still looks frustrated. Let's just well, well, still that's just, looks frustrated. This is how Effect looks. Hey, look, as someone with that kind of face that always looks upset, just come on, give me, we're not, we're not <laughs> always safe. mad. Oh, he's got some RBF. Is that what's going yeah, on? Yeah, a little touch of RBF. Let's just give Effect a hug. You know, Rascal probably gave him one, like, don't worry, you're not alone. The Dallas Fuel will burn bright again. And sure enough, well, they are tied up right now with the top team in the league, one to one. We have two more maps coming up. Obviously, we are looking for the team to come out ahead three to one here, or we're going to get that map five Duke out. But now it's really going to be on Dallas Fuel to show us that, you know, the control map wasn't a fluke, that they can take it to New York Excel on Hollywood. And we'll see both these teams running similar compositions, at least so far, but Libero switches off Torb. No attack Torb here. This is not your ladder game, fortunately for all of us. They're just going to run into a pure dive composition. Defensively, Rascal is on the Junkrat. Mercies for both teams, so first deaths will not be permanent if people die in resurrectable positions. Yes, that is actually what you always mention, Max, and it is crucial. But you die in a spot, that's why you see the Mercy Widow, you know, it's just die in a spot where the Mercy can get the res off and the fight continues. They're going to be fairly even right now, actually, both of these Mercies just working their way up to that Valkyrie ultimate, which is a game changer still with the chain healing, chain damage boosting. Libero, hey, guess you what? He gets to go ahead and throw shurikens into you, no problem, he'll be all about that. Yeah, that's really cool strategy oh. there. Libera rotated left. They had to divide their attention between left and right. Then the tanks jump in and absolutely crush the back line. That's it. That's first point. What is this matchmaking? <laughs> you know, it's like, why are you shooting the reflecting Genji? Now I'm dead. What can you do? You're shooting him and he's reflecting everything into the guys in front of him. Just really patient push there. They'll make them defend onto two different angles and use the mobility to exploit that as well. And now just going to try to roll in. Just a little tickle battle between the Winstons here. Don't want to get too caught out. They will take pack control. That's solid. Effect not going to be too happy about that. But then again, Effect can certainly spot that his counterpart is gone. Chip Sian finding the pick on Saviolbi. That'll slow things down here for New York XL. And there is a bit of a natural choke point here for Dallas to try and take advantage of, or at least try to burn a little bit of time off of this clock. And so we'll see if they decide to hang around here, keep the party going. Yeah, it does seem like they want to fight right up this choke. That's why they're around that wall there. Libero's going to try to make them defend two different angles yet again as he's on his own trip to the right. Tire coming in from Rascal. And no, denied! I love it. Libero's just rubbing his hands in glee. Yes, I can go ahead and pick up this junk for free. Not going to happen. Tired just for him, and Costa is still keeping him alive, and even bringing Effect back to life. And well, never mind, he died because of it. He gave his life for you, Effect. You better make it worthwhile. That's not really a trade that you want to make, not in the position that they're in. Effect still getting a lot of work done, is going to have to bail out, but now they are down a healer, a healer who had tr uh, Valkyrie up as well. So they're going to have to go a little bit of progress on this point. Effect still being such a nuisance in the back line, though, and he's actually fighting all around the cart. Yeah, really keeping the pressure on with that Discord Orb as well. You can see even he can go ahead and just melt the Winston so much so that Winston decides to go ahead and pop the Primal. Just kind of getting in here. Libero, man, he just decides to fully commit with that Blade of Chip Saiyan. Not quite able to get the monster follow-up, but still damage there. He manages to drop one of the supports, and that could continue to stagger things here for the Dallas Fuel as Chip Saiyan now. He's back into it, but he's already under fire. 
I say Biobi's been absolutely shut down this game. There's a rascal taking him down there. However, New York still has the better end of things here. They try to keep pushing him through the corner. Someone's got to push that card. Generally not going to be the Genji's duty, but when the executive calls, even the Cyber Ninja has to push a limo. Usually hired by executives. Cyber Ninja ninjas don't come cheap. No. <laughs> but it will be Rassel now. Yet again, the tires. Yet again, focused. And yet again, Libero getting blown up to bits. But well, we will have Arc floating high right now, trying to keep his teammates alive. And he's doing a pretty magnificent job of it so far because Dallas Fuel are dropping like flies. It's Meko. He's got the self-destruct if he needs it. Doesn't even want to go for it, though, because right now his teammates are just going to work. Yeah, able to get the better part of the support ultimate trades there. Chips did fall towards the end of that. He had to burn a couple to get through, but now was riding some good momentum is New York. And an interesting switch here. Dallas has gone to a defensive Sombra here on last point. It's something you'll often see on offensive second points here because of the big packs, but that is a decent one. Rascal's gonna be playing a lot of solars. Not packs that you generally are gonna be able to play around, but he's got middle packs, so you'd have to imagine that's where the defense wants to stage up. That's where they want to try and take this fight, but they are kind of getting pushed back a little bit here. Save Yolby. If he catches him out in the open like this, he is gonna be having a field day, especially if his tanks join in on the dive as well. Trance has been thrown into it. Chip Seven feeling the heat, has to put out the fire. And well, it is going to be Sebiobi still alive. He's still got the pulse as well, but they are not going to need it. The focus fire just too good. They are dropping targets left and right. Now that they're pushed off of this point and they will get the progress around first pack, you have to wonder if Rascal's going to stick on this. The packs, when you get this far back, are few and far between. There's a very small one all the way back. But they might try to re-engage here, or at least maybe try to get one EMP. That's why you see Rascal messing around out back there. He's going to have EMP next fight. Yeah, he will be able to get that one at least. If you'll be kind of chilling out here waiting. He's making sure that pack doesn't get hacked. Yeah, he just wants to find it. And well, decides to just get into it because his tanks are calling for support. They nearly pick up the kill. There it is. The zoning pulse goes on and finds the kill on Custa. Very well done there by Sibiobi, just ratcheting up the pressure on Dallas Fuel as now New York Excel have an opening here to take advantage of. Rascal now comes in the EMP. Was wondering how long he would hold on to it, but decides to just throw it into that fight and that's going to be perfect. Yeah, nice self-destruct follow-through as well. We'll take down Libero. EMP just absolutely destroys Zen. And when the other team has a Zen like Jonak, then of course that's going to be a top priority. And now they're in a position to retake pack control because they're going to be able to push them back. They can still fight around this mid-pack, which is hacked. So Rascal is going to find the opportunity to stay on the Sombra. And wow, he is making quite a bit of progress. Just the EMP used in that last fight. Guess what? He's up to 66% again, Hex. The man right now is just charging ults. Sebiobi is babysitting that pack yet again. He does not want to allow them in position to be able to really gain good effect, but Rascal, 5% away from an EMP just again. Yeah, well, in fact, he's looking for that angle with that pulse, taking his sweet time about it because we got to go to Libero. He's got the blade out, looking for a target, but he's all by his lonesome. He's not having too much fun over here. We'll be able to stay alive just long enough, and Siegel dancing on the edge, just managing to back off here. Hold his ground, there's the EMP, but not gonna survive past that. Libero with the headshot kill. Yeah, Libero doesn't need any of his abilities. He's just using shurikens. Now he's got his abilities back online. I'd be real surprised if we see this Sombra play continue, but Rascal will stick on it yet again, even on last point here, having just used EMP. Well, now it is all on Mickey. He's trying to stay alive. He's trying to cut the team in half, and he will do a great job with Alpha Chip Saiyan. Two big kills coming through here for Dallas Fuel. Nearly a minute left on the clock for New York XL, and they are putting up a fight every inch of the way. But here we go, Libero, one hack, that's perfect for him. Finds that first kill, but no pack for him to heal up on. That's one of the big reasons that Rascal did stick on this, is because the team was still fighting over there. Had he switched off it, they would not have been able to have pack control. And because of that, Rascal still has EMP for this next and perhaps penultimate fight here with only a minute left. He's got his eyes on it. Hoping to catch somebody out of position here, so Yobi wouldn't be a bad target. Not gonna be able to get the hack off on him though. So Rascal forced to reposition and now they're just waiting. Working their way in together here, New York XL. We've got Libero on the McCree now, trying to take advantage of those long sight lines. He is getting topped up. Are gonna be keeping an eye on him for sure. The sight lines, he's also on Sombra duty as well. And even when he gets hacked, he's, his kit is still largely intact. That kit being mostly just a six shooter. Now their EMP comes down. They're able to get Jonak in that EMP and he will die. He dies to a self-destruct of all things. That was looking so good, the hack, the clutch coming through here from Rascal. 
might be the big difference maker. Obviously, the heals are still going to be coming through here from Ark, but he canceled out the res, the res rather, and Rascal with the sound barrier still alive. They're having to give ground. This Five time. seconds left, and Mono just, no, Janice rather, dies now. This summer strategy has worked out so well, and it's a really good sign for Dallas that they're playing around a strategy. This is not six players, this is a team. Right now, the zoning dead eye comes here. You can kill people through a transcendence. Doesn't find targets there, though. Yeah, and he gets hacked for his trouble. Rascal just being this eternal thorn in their side, even dodging the self-destruct just far enough. They have made more progress, however, New York Excel. The fight continues, two kills, making up the difference. Libero, however, not gonna find that kill on effect, or maybe he will at the very end. Not quite gonna happen. And they are still in this New York Excel, staggering these kills. There's the headshot, and he's not able to get in fast enough. Rascal, the hero translocate at the end, but it wasn't enough to make the difference. Still a pretty solid defense there, and there were a couple times I thought that that's gotta be it, when the, that's gotta be the end of the Sombra. But even though he was dead, the rest of his team's still playing around the packs. You don't need, it, it just adds so much healing to this. Diva was, or er, Siegel on Diva was sitting on the pack. I'm like, you guys should just walk away. You're never killing a Diva who's sitting on a hack Sombra pack. It regenerates too quickly. The armor is too high. The health pool's too high for Diva. You're just never gonna do it. Just nice strategy there towards the end. And I think this is, a good glimpse of what Dallas can be. They've got all this versatility in the world, all the strategies. It's just been about execution as a team. That's a good sign for Dallas moving forward. They allowed three points, but there's no time left in the bank here for New York. As we switch in, it will be now Dallas showing us what they've got in the playbook for their offensive side. Mickey doing a bit of the talking right now, as you guys can see. Glad to see that there is quite a bit of communication going on for Dallas as well. That has been one of their issues when times get rough. They kind of shut down. They don't talk as much yeah. here, at least. And they managed to actually get the job done. And so there is quite a bit of conversation going into this next one. Well, this defense is a little bit interesting here. They're going to run Libero Omni Farah, Far Mercy. You know, it's kind of an odd composition um, for a defense here. Offenses will often run this, but it's a decent point for Farah. And oddly enough, it's actually been New York's best composition when it comes to winning team fights. They're winning about 62% of the team fights that they are running at Far and Mercy on. Now, Libero is just one of those versatile, you know, a lot of talk about Rascal and his ability to just switch heroes with very little impact as far as his performance is concerned. Libero, definitely one of those guys as well. And Farah, very strong. So. We'll see. There's going to be a lot of poke damage that Dallas Fuel are going to have to deal with trying to make their way through the arches here. But they have to get that exec to work. Eye on the prize now. It's just kind of interesting that the tanks for the defense are going to have to play a little further back because if they dive in, they're going to not have any healing unless the Mercy peels off to go help them. They need to stay near Jonak, who is off his trademark Zenyatta, onto the Moira instead. So much more compact defense. They're going to have to play more passively. Hang around, Mego taking a point, nearly costing his life. Sebiobi getting punched in the face right now. Siegel doing some good work there, and now Siegel decides it's time to get in here, trying to look for the fight. Good defense here, trying to punish these tanks for leaping into the back line, but that doesn't save Custa's life. And Sebiobi right now running amok. Two kills for him, and that opens it up for Libero to join in. Uh, such great play there, though, because Giannis coming in, you thought he was going to be in a lot of trouble because he's not going to have an orb on him. It's not the distance healing of an Ana. But then Ark peels off Libero, lets Libero do his own thing, focuses on the tanks, keeps his tanks alive. Then he's back to the sky, really stretching Ark thin here, but he's up to the task on his mercy. So this is what I was talking about, just rockets, rockets, rockets. Siegel not going to have D-Matrix up to stop all of them. And it will be Mecco to kick things off here. Effect laid low immediately. Two minutes 30 left on the clock. And they are just going to go ahead and get aggressive on this. Janice is trying to take the fight to him, no problem. Yeah, aggressive right in the archway. They'll push him all the way back. Nearly every ultimate on board for New York as they hold on the defense. Rascal has switched to the McCree to try to deal with this, but very difficult to get a clean shot, especially with a Mercy in the pocket. You have to discord and headshot Ifara to really have any sort of impact. Mm -hmm. Especially as far as deciding to get clever. Does take a little bit of a peek. Rascal not going to get caught off guard by that. But hey, the barrage is up and they're getting chased out by the rockets. And all of this focus right now on Libero means that Sibiobi has so much room to work with. Chip Saiyan dies yet again. They were able to get Jonak, but they bring Chips back to life. So now Dallas using the advantage that they have coming in. Valkyrie has been popped as well on both sides of things. A Deadeye comes out. Mako's down. That's a big one now. 
going to make it very difficult to get onto that point and contest as long as the Deadeye is up and running. And you can just tell that Libra wants to find an opportunity to get in here and use that barrage. But with both the Diva and the McCree still alive, not a whole lot of options. And look at this. Just decides to chuck it in there, but it doesn't really get anything out of it. I got absolutely nothing out of it, and now they're in trouble of not being able to touch a point, but they do send in the Winston of Primal Rage, so now it's time to re-engage. New York's so good at waiting to the last second to really commit to refighting. All right, Seagull just gonna be dancing. He's got that self-destruct. If he needs to force him off the point, open it up here for his team, but it's a wall of blue in the kill feed. Ark not gonna be floating around long this time. It will be Janice just launching himself bodily back onto the point, hoping to just whittle a little bit more time off the clock. And they will do a good job. Dallas Fuel, they cap it with a minute left. As good as Jonak has been on the Zenyatta, which he will now switch over to, he got dominated the last two fights by effect. First on a pulse bomb on his Moira, then a single clip. And as a tracer, it's a very difficult target to lock down is that Moira. She's got such tracking damage, auto lock on, and then also being able to fade away. You almost never can kill her with a pulse bomb. Beautiful positioning by effect. He's trying to get the mercy. Decides not to hang around. Greed, sometimes not so good, and a bullet to the face isn't much better. Effect, that's what you get. Brutal turn of events, and in the meantime, you've got the tanks just stomping around in the back line, stopping this payload from making progress. Gonna absolutely evict them too, and now they're gonna have to push into a team running a Widow in the back lines. This is really going to test Mickey's medal. How well are Mickey and Siegel going to be able to deal with the Widowmaker up top, if that's how they choose to deal with it? And Libero's warmed up. We'll see what Rascal's got because I think this is their best option to deal with Libero. The, it's just too much distance to cover with your tanks. You need the headshot here, especially if he's got a pocket mercy going. But he keeps baiting out these shots. They both got pocket mercies. It's really just a matter of who can click the head first. It's oh, Jingle Peaks! I mean, sorry, I get excited, man, because that's some spicy stuff that you have to know the model. Exactly! Oh. And it works perfectly with the Infrasight up. Libero can track that shot beautifully. We will get Rascal back in the fight. Custer there on the spot with the res. And now the res is on cooldown. Self-destruct is thrown into this as well. Sib Yobi trying to play it safe. Does manage to get around the corner. Wanted to go after that Zenyatta there. Thought better of it. And now we resume the Widow battle. This is what Hollywood has become lately, especially on second. But they decided that Rascal is not going to be able to win this one 1v1. So they're sending everything else at the just get in on this guy, get him off of that high ground effect. Never gonna let up here, unless Liberal can hit another beautiful headshot. And finally, deciding to change up the positioning here. Get on that high ground again here, Libero. And he's looking for targets that are out in the open, looking for the squish. He's not quite connecting. He does get a body shot. That's not gonna be good enough. And he needs to find the follow-up here on Chip Sayed, but there are so many targets, Ooh. never mind. Siegel, check the part, check the paintwork on your mech, because that was one hell of a close shot. Well, Libero will finally fall. This one not over yet, but Sebiobi is going to come back in here and finish up the remaining targets here. It will be pushed all the way back. That is a torrent of white on the left-hand side. New York cleaning up on second, and now we're below one minute. Rascal's going to have to step it up on his Widow. He has Infrasight. Can he get the shots he needs? In terms of positioning right now, Libero is the one with the advantage. And so it's Rascal who's kind of rotating around, looking for an off angle. Looking for some way to catch Libero off guard. There we go. Sure enough, Inverside is out. Libero definitely knows it now. And Rascal gives away his positioning. So there's the follow-up shot. Just a bit of a love tap there on the tank. Yeah, they're just going to hide away from this. They want the, no part of the Inversight Widow. They're going to give up a little bit of ground. And then when this is gone, they're going to come in. Still trying to deal with the other Widow on the other side of things. Effect has been close to these kills, but not able to finish it. Not quite able to pick them up. Rascal, however, still alive here. Now he's changed it up. Bit more of a forward angle. Going to be a little bit more difficult here for New York to get out here to challenge the payload. When you've got... Never mind. Never mind. Libero ends it. Big kill there for Libero. He does get overwhelmed in the end. Mickey jumping immediately. And then Rascal has been brought back to life thanks to Custa. So there is a chance here for Dallas Fuel to continue to push forward to take the fight through the doors to point three. They should be able to get this one here. It is just stall out tactics coming in with Ark going down. That was their last good hope of having a nice healing source on there. We'll just continue to stall, but Dallas will grab second point with no time left on their clock. Let's add 90 seconds for their final push here. Ooh, Jonak punishing Rascal. Chips will avenge him though. And those kills slightly inconsequential as the doors will take a while to open.
Now Beck gonna try to set up up top here. Rascal goes back onto the Sombra. This is something that Dallas has run before, both offensively and defensively. I think it makes more sense offensively, but Rascal made it work on defense too. This is where they want to play. Yeah, it is his comfort zone, it seems. Working his way towards that EMP as quick as possible, getting that silence. Janus getting hammered right now. Still alive and kicking though, and Libero there to mask his teammate as well. We've got an angry monkey who's just crouching in the corner. Mickey gonna be able to get out of there in time, and they've traded places. Well, you better be able to get a good first fight right through the doorway here, because I don't think New York has any designs of letting them in and come and play around this pack. They want to hold a little further forward. I mean, of course, Jonak is going to be a mile away, but I think the moment New York smells blood, they're going to go after it. Uh, they do give up ground. They do want to deny this main pack here. They're going after it. Yeah, they have to keep him off of it, exactly. If they allow him to get in, this could get tricky. Janice has to back off, self-destruct out in the open. We will have trades, and Mecco gets caught. Can they move together though? Libero just barely being kept alive and he needs to stay alive. He's so close to the blade and that could be the game ender here. If he can manage to hang in there, 99 and now he's got it. Blade locked and loaded. When does he decide to pull it out though? Well, he's doing transcendence. Here's the transcend phase, but no! A pulse bump takes down Libero and Jonah. Dallas still alive. Oh, that's a shocker. But then you've still got Janice back here. He's roasted him. Tased to death, the slowest death, the death of a thousand jolts. And well, it will be overtime now, as Dallas Fuel hoping to hang in here long enough. You got Siegel doing the dance. But his teammates are nowhere to be found, and he is not long for this world. Overtime burning down, and Chip Sand won't make it in time. New York will hold. Rassel switched off of the Sombra there at the end towards the Soldier 76. It's the exact opposite of what he did before. He switched off that. The pack control goes away. His team, which was relying on that mega pack to fight and hold that point, were now left out without it. Very difficult to come back from that. New York has taken map number three, going to map four right after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Omened by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League.
Focus up, guys. Focus up. We have the best players. We have the best fans. Going in the game. Going to three. On three. We wanted to make sure that all the best players in the world were in the league, regardless of where they're from. You're really starting to see everybody really wants to up their game. All right, welcome back from the break, everybody. I mean, yes, the best Overwatch going on right now. And, well, you have the best team in the league. We're currently competing, and we're currently in the lead in this match. Dallas Fuel, you know, they brought it back, tied it up one-to-one. -one, but New York put their foot down on map three, and now they're pulling ahead. Yeah, they gave them everything they could handle, and we're going to be going into Gibraltar here for Dallas's last hope to push us into a map number five. And it's Gibraltar, so you need Widow play, period. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Widow's meta right now, especially on these kind of maps with super long sight lines. Right now, New York XL, 75% win rate on Gibraltar. I believe Dallas at 40%. Mono's going to come back in for Giannis, just whipping up main tanks yet again. But for me, the story going into it is which Widow is going to be better. Is, is Rascal going to be able to shut down Libero? It was actually pretty even. I mean, the Mercy's did a good job bringing them back to life, and it's just a matter of tracking down that Widow when she's brought back to life, like looking at the kill feed of like, oh no, I have to duck now. The Widow's back on the field, so I'd be really surprised you don't see Widow here on both sides. Dallas has run a Sombra on this map before, both offensively and defensively, so yeah. Dallas is really in love with the Sombra. Uh, previously, they run AKM on it, although Rascal has run it, so you can run it defensively, um, especially on this first point. This is where you'd see it defensively, where a team will hack the pack room, and there's a giant pack in there, uh, mm. hence the name pack room, but it's server room. Crazy. A more aggressive strategy that I haven't seen in a while that I actually really like is hacking underneath the car wash and then setting up with a bunch of tanks down there and just kind of making them come to you, although I haven't seen that in a while. And then on the other side of things, they run it on like second point. They run it in, in, in situations where it doesn't make a ton of sense, but you know, if, the, if you don't know what you're doing, neither does the other team. I mean, it does sound cliche, and that is kind of the whole thing with Dallas yeah. coming into this match today is just they need to figure out what they're going to be playing with Siegel, with Rascal starting on the roster, not even going for any roster changes here in terms of subs. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have AKM sitting on the sidelines here for Dallas Fuel, for example. You know, and so now New York, they've had a few maps to start downloading Dallas, start figuring out what's coming. Uh, don't get excited. Ark is definitely not going to be playing Torb. Libero might play Doom. That would be fun, <laughs> but let's not get our hopes up. Yeah, I mean, if there's going to be a Doom Fist, it would probably be effective if anyone. All right, so it looks like the Dell's defense has come out of spawn. They are not opting for a defensive Widow right out the gate, which is completely fine strategy-wise. They'll run just a pure dive, and they're maybe going to try to dive on the Widow with the Genji, mm -hmm. maybe get effect back there as well. So it's it's not a must run. I think it's if you have a good Widow, then it's obviously the, a better option. What? Oh. Well, last second, Rascal's going to go to Soldier 76. All right, this is a very standard composition defensively for Gibraltar, about as old as time. We talk about Widow being good because of the sight lines. Well, that's also why Soldier 76 is good, because long distance damage sight lines. Libero just going to check the corner up there with the Anzo. Actually, going to stay on the Hanzo. Sure, why not? Why not? Hey, face full of scatter arrows. Right as around, you come around the corner. That's not pleasant. So that's definitely not what you're hoping for there if you were a Dallas Fuel tank. And yeah, Libero just hanging out on this. Definitely not the sniper we're expecting to see. This is the one we deserve, though. It, it damn well is as Libero scatter shots effect. Apex <laughs> is not going to be happy right now. That's the first time I've ever laughed at Tracer getting scatter shotted. I'm but, usually on the other end of that. Exactly, that's what I was about to say. Usually you're on the receiving end <laughs> of all of those scattered arrows. It's a lot more fun to watch. Whoa, oh. That was a tasty one, though. Rascal is gone. And so yep. the DPS suffering a big here. They're going to cut in half as well. Can he hit the follow-up on Costa? Yes, Libero from on high. Just raining arrow <laughs> after arrow in. Total destruction in the defense. And Dallas Fuel just rompa stomped. Not going to have a chance to stop New York Excel from taking point A. Jesus, what is, is this? Nottingham Forest is Robin Hood in action. He's absolutely crushing with the good old bow and arrow here. He's even got tights. <laughs> sort of. Well, unfortunately, no more men in tights as he's going to go over to the other Shimada. Shimado, Shimada. Genji comes out for Libero now. Oh, Sebiobi, he's got, he's so close. Where is the collapse here? Somehow these healers all surviving. So Sebiobi decides to back off, play more around his team. Bit chaotic there as Effect gets overwhelmed by Jonak. No surprise there, of course. Jonak is the tracer killer after all. And Sebiobi right now, he just wants to get out because Mickey has been boasted. Just something to try to stabilize here, but Mako comes in, takes down Mickey. Both Winston's now out of the fight. A 
Beck gonna try to find purchase with this pulse bomb. He's got Ark in his sights. That was so much focus fire, they couldn't even get the trance to keep him alive. Now it will be the trance getting thrown into it here by Joe Nack deciding to just throw it all in and keep his teammates alive as long as possible. Effects with the pulse, not gonna find anybody. Then he gets an orb to the face and say Yobi will win out versus Rascal. Now it's Mickey. Just firmly staggered. Does he decide to go for the primal though? And yes, he does. Just buy a maximum amount of time, it looks like. Although he decides to just back off as well. It might buy them enough time to come back in or at least avoid getting staggered off the edge here. Seagull gonna be alive just for a moment. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're trying to stagger it, but you can't do it without your tanks. They, oh. This delay is over. They're, they're, what delay? Delay? Yeah, exactly. Right now, I mean, Libero is just having a dash party over here. <laughs> I mean, he might as well be DMing. Save so getting all excited. Like, yeah, I'm about to get a kill. Libero, no, no fun allowed. A rascal in effect were trying to do their best, but the pivotal moment of that fight was they both found themselves in a hallway in a corner. Not ideal. They tossed out Balsam and try to get out of there, but they ride together, they die together. In that case, not a whole lot of riding happening. Straight into the grave. Looking for it. It's going to be great. What a collapse on a chip side. And yet again, Rascal, though, he has been the hero with the Dragon Blade in the past. And yet again, he delivers two kills there. But Sibyobi will turn it back, and Mono wins versus Siegel. The payload will continue to make progress. Mickey just barely gonna squeak out of there. And guess what? Rascal used his Dragon Blade. Libero has still got his. Yeah, Ark did end up using the Valkyrie there though, but still is going to be fine. They're gonna have Transcend for this next fight. They've got around the artificial choke that is the bottom of Gibraltar Hill. Rascal has gone over to the McCree now. He is tired of dealing with these flankers. Gonna try to hit flashbangs here. Set it up his team, but it's just been too much from Genji and Tracer. Oh, this is a perfect window. Chip Saiyan still doesn't have it. Chip Saiyan doesn't have the chance to stay alive. Somehow, Custa keeps him alive. Must have survived with 5 HP there. That was cutting it far too close. Or not close enough in Libero's case. Yeah, well, Libero decided to not go in deep on that. He could have. The Transcend is forced out, though. And as soon as this fades, Libero should bust out this blade. He's got the dash. He's going to be looking for him. And high noon, perfectly timed from Rascal. Still, this is gonna be the big opportunity here. Straight into it, trying to chip him down low, trying to force it. If he can get that flash out, that would be big. Sebiobi with the deny, but too much damage dealt in the meantime by Dallas. Sebiobi will get himself too, but that is going to be where that ends as Dallas will regroup defensively. And now finally, after all of this map, it seems like Dallas's first chance to breathe. So I'll take a moment with Dallas. Well. Oh. Just a moment, though, because Libero still got this play. Yeah. <laughs> Libero is still hungry. Ark has got Valk as well, so there is a bit of throughput here in terms of healing. Uh, you might wonder why Libero just jumped on Rascal to try to get on him early before popping Blade. He wants to get that flashbang out of the way exactly. so that he doesn't get completely shut down by a Blade. Well, there we go. Libero, he's yeah. had enough time to go ahead and pick up a Blade of his own. Well, no, it is the Blade. Yeah. The Blade. He got Rascal, that's exactly what he was looking for. Will not find a whole lot more. Forces out a couple of ultimates, though. Primal's been popped yet again. And Seagull's a magician with these self-destructs. He's just always finding one or two during all of these. Seems like Mako's been on the wrong side of those self-destructs more times than not. Somebody check Twitch. Is the stream live right now? <laughs> Is Seagull live? Is he coming up with the streamer plays right now? <laughs> I'm liking it. I'm liking it. It's definitely keeping it interesting here. Two minutes and a half for New York Excel to push forward for victory. And well, there we go. Effect getting spotted by Libro, who's finally decided to change it up. After using the blade, not quite going to connect with the shot. Now there's a shield in his way as well. Discord, however, is on Mickey, so he's going to take a lot of damage very quickly. But this is where Libro wants to be. Up high. And now things are going to get a bit difficult unless Rascal can hit some sick headshots, and that's just not going to be the case. Well, it's been Liberal and Rascal playing against each other for the most part. That's been the very small micro game. That's why you see this switch right now as Rascal's just gotten the better of Libero. And it's just too much to deal with uh, as a Genji that you have to focus on the McCree so hard early on that makes the rest of your play that much more difficult around it. Liberal yet to really find the angles here, though. Rascal up top is going to be very hard to dislodge because he's got his whole posse with him. And Jonak finds out the hard way how Justice is dealt with in the West. Raw hide. They're just rolling. They're just rolling right through. Mickey kind of waiting a little bit too long there to get the jump pack out of there. Unfortunately for him, he will get overwhelmed, but the spawn is right around the corner, so he should be able to make it back in time. Rascal still has that dead eye. Has to be a little bit worried. Now that Libero's back in the fight for him to stand out in the open, that's exactly what he was hoping for. Mako charging up forward. D-Matrix getting used. There's the bait. 
And is there a chance here for him to get the Deadeye? He's trying to close that angle, but eventually it works out. Mecco able to force him off. Well, that's what Mecco was trying to do the first time, but very good resilience by Rascal to just shoot him in the face and stand up there. You're not getting him off high ground for free. Here comes the Deadeye. Liberal. The true Deadeye. It's like getting shot through your scope. Yeah, exactly. The body shots didn't even get the headshot. Didn't matter. He managed to get the job done. Post bomb there. Looking for the DMEC. Mecco hanging on by a thread. Excellent healing coming through by Ark to keep him alive. And this is an opportunity now here for New York XL to start spinning this their way. We do have a bit of the oh, quick play there. The, the fakes, jukes. the jukes. Grappling hook still up. Effect still looking for this kill, though. He does not want to let him get away. Oh, I'm really surprised Sabiobi didn't look the other way and maybe try to get to effect at the back line. Meanwhile, Sabiobi and Ark fall. They only have four alive for New York. It seems like they want to regroup, but we're below 20 seconds. There isn't a whole lot of time to work with here. Venom Mine goes off. Libero can feel good about that, perhaps, but... Now they need to try and get over this wall, just jump over uh, the building straight onto the point. It's Are they going to have time? Mano's got to have the Primal Rage onto this. Primal Rage reset his jump, get back onto the cart. He's and looking shoot. like it. They're going to first send in their Tracer, touch. Did he get moved out? Yes, he's still here. Rascal, though, looking for the angle. Overtime Wick going down, and they are just barely going to get the touch. Of course, you still have the Master in place. Sabiobi was alive, but not for long. Rascal finds him in the end. This could be at the turning point here where Dallas Fuel were able to hold. They stopped New York from picking up the third point. A successful defense for the Fuel. A very patient defense, too. New York's not surprising anybody with their last second strategies here. I mean, we've seen it on Volskaya before. Sabiobi blanks onto the cart. They've got a very set order of who is going to keep the cart alive in overtime to an optimal ability for everyone else to come in. So they send in Sabiobi, then it's Diva's turn, and then usually their second DPS, especially if they're running a Genji, then the Winston comes in. But what Dallas did was like, they're like, okay, Sabiobi, he's gonna blink and he's gonna be gone. Don't even, don't even waste bullets on him. All right, then the tanks are coming in. All right, DMAC. And then here comes Mono. Kill him right away. So like, they knew exactly the conga line that New York sends in to keep carts alive and they just never let that party get started. Completely shut down on defense. However, that cart went about as far as it can go without completing the map. Dallas has to finish out Gibraltar to force a map five, and that's all I'm ever rooting for. Taking it to overtime, especially considering how well they played on control earlier in the regular time. And so it would be great to see the map five for Dallas. It would be fantastic. Now it's a matter of maintaining focus. You can tell effect showing no emotion, just zeroed in. I also really liked how Effect has just been a nuisance. You never want to let Widow set up, and that's all Effect was doing. He's not finishing the kills, but not only that, he's making grapples come down so that he can't reposition himself even when he's done with dealing with the Tracer, and then he never really overextended. He never tried to go for a kill that he was not going to secure. He just made that Rascal uncomfortable the entire time because that is a great position to have your Widow in. Never allowed it. The tank play from Dallas, they were always up front, alive most of the time. So it's all coming together for Dallas here. But again, Dallas's problem's never really been their, their defense. There we go. Round of applause. Ark made it in the end. <laughs> he got the job done. I mean, he got up there, man. So we will have a bit of that Anna support. Definitely where the sniper wants to be, on high. And so, countdown is over. Let's get into it. Dallas Fuel now. Everything on the line here. On the offense. Moving forward straight onto the payload, no time wasted. In terms of the defense, Newark XL trying to hold onto that high ground just a little bit. Well, the rollout from McCree here is a little bit interesting, but Rascal was playing really well on it, that I'm completely fine with it. Also, it forced Libero off of the Genji. Let's see how it works on the offense here. Now they're taking it slow so that McCree can come up on the high ground. Yeah, dangerous positioning there from Otto. He's barely hanging in there. Does get topped up eventually. Ark, of course, with the positioning, able to keep his main tank alive and in the fight. But Libero gets caught by effect out in the open. Already getting whittled down here. Caught out in no man's land. And so far, Dallas' offense has been unstopped. Seems like defense is now trying to... Well, I, actually, I don't know because the tanks are completely far apart. They should both be in server room protecting their supports. Meanwhile, Sabiobi has fallen as well. This is where the defense should be setting up. Effect the beautiful bomb effect. Yeah, Effect's really stepping up here along with Rascal. Two quick kills coming back, however, for New York XL. They may be able to stop the bleeding. Libero, doesn't matter if he's got five HP, he'll still take all of yours. And so New York XL with Sabiobi back in the fight, they will have a chance here to tap that payload and keep it alive. I've been so impressed with Mickey throughout the day, and not only just not being a liability, but knowing exactly when he can go in and when he can. It's going to be natural for Mickey to be able to be with his other tank, because he knows where the D.Va wants to be. He's been a D.Va specialist since before D.Va specialists existed. 
He knows where his tanks are going to be at all times. That's why I think this combination could be the new front line for Dallas. It was looking solid. Oh, well, there's the trance. Okay, thinking that perhaps he could get a little nasty there. Liberal looking for his angle, trying to force that flash. He gets a bullet to the skull instead. Doesn't matter if you're cybernetic, you're still going to feel that one. And now oh. Rathal from on high. Sick work. Always fun to watch McCree's hit headshots. Oh, and the cleanup is there. The late stagger kills. We'll see where this McCree wants to set up. Rascal would like to hang out on a bridge. Get some free shots in here. Eat some shurikens, but no problem. He's had some pocket healing, though, too. Oh, yeah, keep Rascal alive at all costs. Give him the orb. And he's got custom damage boosting him now as well. So as they try to make their way through this angle, he's got to be a little bit careful. Of course, John Hack with the volleys going to be clipping him quite a bit. But this is only feeding the Valk here for Custa. He's just been setting up in the Widow spots, and why not when you're hitting shots like a Widow? Scopes are overrated. Who needs them? Just get it done with the six-shooter. It's fine. Peace will be restored. And there you go. That's what we're talking about. Rascal with the perfectly delayed flashbang deletes Libero, minimizes that Dragon Blade. Just perfect timing there. Gets it before the deflect is fully down in the animation, so no dash through is going to allow him to escape. Rascal's done that more than once, timed it perfectly. And meanwhile, while everyone's dealing with the threat of Rascal, this payload keeps a pushing. Keeps pushing. We now have had some changes come through, though. We will have Libero on that soldier already trying to move through. D, -ma D Matrix creating an opening. Mecho getting pummeled, though. Instantly focused. He just chucks his mech in. Hoping for a self destruct kill. Not quite going to find it. It's Save Yobi, though, to get the stick on Mickey. And so a key part of the tank duo gone. Rascal decided to just take the fight. The Libero misses his flash, though. And that's a bit hot to handle. Needs to get out, but he's not going to make it. Save Yobi is there to win the fight. Yeah, switch from Libero. Really smart right there. Doesn't need to be babysit just as much. Able to get the burst damage that he needs, but you mentioned it, it was the missed flash that really cost him there. Rascal sacrificed all his positioning to go for it. Missed the flash, somehow missed the fan. And we'll see if he wants to stick on the McCree because it's so much like control maps. The second point of Gibraltar is all about can, can how do we take control? And it plays so differently when you have the positioning than when you're trying to take positioning. It's really going to test the metal of the Dallas tanks now, is how do your tanks take control back of the shuttle? Well, that could be a part of this. We do have some blue showing up here as Rascal does manage to find Mono. Kill after kill coming through. Libero still on high, watching his teammates die. He's out for revenge right now. We'll try and find Chip Saiyan, but Chip Saiyan getting topped up in the meantime. There was a chance to lay him low, but instead Libero still hanging in here with the tactile visor and the transcendence used by Chip Saiyan. Could be an opportunity to decide not to hang around, to back off and wait for the rest of the team, Rest, wait for the cavalry to roll in to create some space for him to use that all-important ultimate. And yeah, Mano's gonna come in here and finish this, but the Destruct will keep Libero zoned out of this. He tries to come back in, gets a little bit of damage. Meanwhile, that buys all the space they need for Jonak to come back to life. And Jonak revived, kills Rascal, defense stabilizes. Oh, that patience from Libero. It's just two seconds difference. Instead of throwing it out, then he waits for his tanks to get in there. The primal gets thrown in, and that's going to just so chaos in the Dallas line. Let's him just get that space going for the tack visor. And the moment you hear that self destruct is a great moment for a soldier who's got tactical visor up. One, that means that there's going to be a baby diva on the field. Free kill right there for you with tactical visor. Two, no defense matrix, which yep. is the tactical visor natural enemy. Oh, and again, Chip saying the collapse coming in here between Sebyobi and his tanks on that back line has been horrendous so far for Dallas. Sebyobi just barely hanging in there. Will he be able to make it back in time? Could go for the stick, was thinking about it perhaps, but he decides to play it safe. Wants to stay alive and keep going in this fight. Yeah, 10 HP going for the stick would have been a very difficult proposition there. You don't want to die before it happens. Rascal gets the Deadeye onto Ark, though. That's a lot of healing down, so Jonak's going to have to pop this Transcend. Eventually, someday, they will kill Effect. <laughs> it's not today, though. Effect's gonna be around for a little while longer. Sebi will be getting tired of his antics, though, decides to make the play. Yeah, I'm surprised he rewound right then, because when another Tracer has a rewind down, that's when you want to start getting damage in, get her down so that you can recall, jump back into the fray. Sebi will be... Force him in, but no, they just barely managed to squeak through. Dallas Fuel. Hanging on by a thread right now. All that time bank has been used up. They're down to 20 seconds, and they need to pick up the second point here to keep their hopes alive. Both supports down. The Dallas front line of their tanks has killed both supports of the New York Excelsior. That should open it up. Rascal is going to d mech Mecco, and the flashbang in. Farewell. Yeah, sticking with this McCree, man. It is all working out. 
And they will manage to push through, but a minute and a half, and a volley of orbs to the face from Jonak. Custa is there to get the res off, so the push will continue. But they don't have a whole lot of time here, Hex. A minute 20 on the clock for Dallas Fuel to make the magic happen. Well, New York's going to give up a lot of this space. A lot of teams will hold much further forward, but New York decides that it is not the time for them to do so. Effect lurking, lurking with the pulse bomb. You can hear the Jaws music. Thinking about it. That shark's going hungry. That, yeah. It got, uh, it got the, the high-pressure tank, you know, instead. <laughs> Somehow Roy Schneider showed up. <laughs> Didn't quite work out. <laughs> Self-destruct in the mix, though. And there it is, the flash, but... Sibio, we still got the stick on Rascal. Will they be able to get things going? No, Custa has got the res used on Mickey already, but then that is a key kill coming through for Siegel. Takes down Ark, Jonak follows, and life gets difficult for New York XL. There is not a whole lot of ground here for them to work with. Dallas Fuel have nearly pulled this off. Well, this is going to be their penultimate push at the very least. They might have another shot at this, but it's such a long walk back that they have to be all in here. Chip's able to take down Mako. That is big. The Remick, not gonna happen, and so it is gonna put all the pressure on Mono, who gets overwhelmed eventually, and only 2% off of his Primal as well. Now it's on New York here. Can they stagger in? Can they stay alive? They have to keep contesting. Two meters left. Can Dallas Fuel turn it? Effect right now, doing the best that he can with the d on Mecco. That's a big one. Chip saying, throwing in the Trance as well, hoping to turn it. Trance comes in just in time, but Jonak does himself a double kill. Now the Primal Rage out, the tank line trying to bring it back for Dallas. And then Rascal decides he's mad. it's time for him to take matters into his own hands, and they will succeed. Dallas Fuel will win on Gibraltar, and we will get that map five, Hex. You cannot say enough about this Dallas front line. They're exactly where they need to be. It makes the healer's jobs easier. And that's kind of the core four. The DPS duo has been doing their own thing wherever they want, but then the tanks and supports are playing so well together. Mickey on main tank, Siegel on off tank. They're playing as one unit, and that's what the best teams in the league do. One tank unit. We're going to map five right after this break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. And by Omen by HP, the official PC display of the Overwatch League.
from the break, everybody. It has happened. Dallas Fuel have pushed New York to the limit. We're going to map five, Hex. It's going to be Ilios to settle it. On the verge of one of the biggest upsets so far in the Overwatch League, and Dallas looks like a completely different team. They, they're trying out a new roster, and you just can't say enough about having tanks that are always on the same page. And considering Mickey's played D.Va forever, it's like having two divas. It just one happens to be a Winston. Yeah, but use the, use the analogy you were, you were telling me in the break. Well, no, it's, it's like when you play those racing games, right? And you're playing against your old ghost. And you just kind of follow your ghost. Like, oh, that's how you make that turn, right? So it's like, that's where the diva's going. And Mickey's like, oh, I know I know where that is. I know where to go. And they're both on top of the exact same target. It's like a, he cast a shade of himself, and now they're both in the same spot. It's just now he happens to be on the Winston. And look, I was just like, as long as they're not the liability, I'm looking forward to it. They've been the strength of this team. And the supports are alive longer, and you can't say enough about how well Rascal's played either. Yeah, I, th I think that is the big thing, because yes, we are seeing Chips getting focused quite a bit. It seems to be the core game plan. Yeah. You get into that back line, you constantly have Mono, Sabiobi collapsing together, trying to get those picks. But when you have the core four of your roster, let's say, your two tanks and your two DPS, because effect has certainly yeah. come alive now with Rascal backing him up. When you have those four, they're just popping off. And you know what? It's, it's going to break the heart of Zenyatta players all over the place, but it's a completely viable strategy. They have a heart? <laughs> well, it's like the circuit board? The, the beating carburetor, whatever is inside of them. But it's a completely viable strategy to let your Zenyatta die. The United Kingdom World Cup team had Boombox as their Zenyatta, and I talked to their tanks, and they're like, one of our strats is just to let them focus Boombox, and then we're going to go after it, and we're going to get more off our counter dive than they're going to get in the back. And if your Zenyatta can protect himself, take one with them, then you've won that trade. So sometimes the strat is let chips die, but as long as your pushback on the other swing is yeah. strong enough, then it's worth it. I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but it's possible. You know, sometimes you're just left alone as Zen and you have to accept your fate. That's why he's so Zen Buddhist. It all means nothing. It is all everything. He just accepts. Yes, he accepts exactly. What fate has done, you know, the cards. It's definitely not got anything to do with him leaving the lights on repeatedly in the apartment, even though they ask him every single time to please turn the lights off. <laughs> it's definitely not doing with the dishes that he leaves in the kitchen. No, it's got, it's all part of the strategy, Hex. You're right. All right, Chip saying, he is going to be on this end, so we'll have to keep a, you know, a death counter going for him. All right, this is really cool. Somber strategy is definitely something that you'll see on this map in particular, Ruins. Of course, that means you'll also see a lot of Widowmaker. The moment Libero figures out that there's no Widow on the other side of things, he's just going to go, yep, front and center. No problems, no need to hide. But it is the same old strat. It's Rascal in the back line. Effect will probably be harassing Libero as well. Yeah, trying to keep some kind of focus. You can have the tanks up there as well, though. We got Sibiobi now. Hey, there was that thing about Chip Saiyan dying, Hex. I think Sibiobi heard that because he's already killed both supports. Yeah, I don't know if that was so much a strategy as something that was simply overlooked. There was no one back there to help him, and that is what? exactly how dive should work. Sibiobi and Giannis on the same hero at the same time, and that is just not enough hit points to last through it. Rascal during all this has farmed up an EMP. This means you're going to see Sabiobi on this side of the map because there's nothing for you on the right side. That pack is gone. Oh, but guess who is over there? Jonak with a volley. Gets the headshot on Rascal. There will be no EMP this fight. They have to reset here, Dallas Fuel. One of the key parts of their offense has been eliminated yet again by Jonak. Well, I mean, that's just self-preservation. You've got a Sombra with EMP and you have one chance at it for Zenyatta to hit the volley before you're just deleted off the map. All right, Sabiobi got his cloak of invisibility. Hi, friends. You get to pick your poison. Is it going to be the bullets or the bomb? <laughs> oh, no, I just feel bad for Chips right there. What an impossible <laughs> situation. They are trying to bring it back, though. They hit a pulse bomb of their own on the other side of things. Mm. Sabiobi won't be cleaned up. See one of the advantages of running Rascal there, that pack hacked. Sabiobi yeah. denied one of the tools of his trade, not able to just stay alive to keep harassing that back line. Yeah, Tracer hates Sombra, because right? Tracer relies so much on packs and being able to control the map, and Sombra just completely takes the win. Rascal not wasting any time at all. There is a bit of a chance, a bit of an opening, perhaps. Self-destruct gets thrown in, and Ark gets a boop on the Custa. They're getting picked off one after another. Rascal feels like he's had this EMP for an eternity, considering how quickly you can generate them with Sombra. You definitely do not want to be holding on to an ult this long. He's had it since first control was taken by New York for the most part. It's been that long. He's never had the opportunity, but he's going to have to find it now. Now it's like, I've gone so far with this EMP that it better work. He's not going to switch now. It'll be very difficult. Save you'll be still lurking. 
Seeing a bit of a shift in the positioning here as well. Sebiobi, love it. The Lurk, he's communicating to his teammates. They're not over on this side of the map. They're definitely going to be on the other one. Definitely avoid that. Do not let them set up. And already, it is going to be overtime. And yet again, Chip Saiyan falls to the hands of Sebiobi. The monster doesn't let up. Primal has been forced here on Mickey, And that is necessary just to keep buying time. Keep it alive here for his team. But Genesis removed Rascal. And yet Rascal. again, the EMP. Not getting used. Did someone mess with his settings? Did someone unbind his ultimate? He's had EMP the entire fight, been unable to use it. It's been brutal and save Yobi. Someone woke him up. He is crushing 100% for NYXL. And strategies are cool, but sometimes the execution just not there. This is where I wish that we, you know, like we were as cool as the desk, right? Where we got the stylus where he can get that overview, because Sebiobi's positioning there just opens it all up for New York. He's so deep in enemy territory. It's like nobody is on my side of the map. And you instantly just see New York start to pull back, start to widen it up, right? Yeah. Okay, now we know where they're coming from. Great, let's set up to welcome them. Rascal can't even use the MP. And if you had just a chalk outline of the places where Chips died, they'd be overlapping, because he always died right on that ramp. Ah. Right inside there. That's where he was every time. That's where Sapiobi was looking there. You don't hunt wolves where you think they're going to be. You hunt wolves where they've been. Now, let's get into the second point now. It is the murder hole aptly named. We'll see if Dallas will get chucked into it or if they're going to be able to kick New York in Spartan style. Both very passive, trying to play around back room. Probably just over this back room, expecting a Sombra. No Sombra on the field, though. Rascal is on the McCree instead because someone has to stop SBB. Oh, Arg, man, hanging on by a thread, and not for long. Mickey eventually does collect a kill, but in the meantime, whoa, they get wiped out completely. Dallas Fuel, not a hope, not a prayer. Custa back and off. Sabiobi realizes, wait, Custa's team, they're all dead. I could just hunt this guy forever. The next time Chip sees a meteor shower, he's just going to start crying and not know why. It's because <laughs> Sabiobi's morning star shower has been a reign of terror on him. My goodness. Just doesn't let up. It's like, do you think it's just that beautiful? No, I got killed by a tracer way too many times. <laughs> and now again, positioning, once again, getting into the back oh, line here. Oh, look who it is. I think he saw him though. Yeah, I think Chip saw him. So that's something. Still hanging around. Just the, the edge. Just look at this. Just the noise has to be. Oh, he painted out. There's no flash. Rascal's got no flashbang. There was an opportunity there for Sebiobi. Well, Chips and Rascal are just hanging out together. Meanwhile, Seagull returns a favor. Jonak down on the other side of things. Could be the opening that Dallas needs. That definitely is. Yeah, the big poke is there. Wow. <laughs> Into the stratosphere. Mecco going mechless. My name is Diva, and I'm going to the moon. <laughs> well, it will be the reset now. Rascal's got the dead eye as well. Handy ult to have if you need to just shut down a team, and we will have the replay coming in here from Effect. Really coming up with the big plays. The stick, oh! Yeah, he's so low, too. But Ark, I guess, jumped onto him. Didn't look like we saw Ark there. That's unfortunate turn of events. Still, it is gonna be now New York's job to get in here and figure out how to start finding some kills. There's the stick from Sib. Yobi, the primal used, however, by Mickey in time to keep him alive. That's big, but Mecco takes down Rascal. Dead eye wasted. Uh, they finally take down Custo. Custo was able to get the res early on, though, for Rascal, but Rascal is brought back to life only to die again. Now it's just about cleaning it up so you can recapture this point. Point very easy to stall out because of how big it is. But eventually, New York will pull it back. We're just about even on percentage-wise. All right, this is map five for all the marbles here. Now tied up two to two. Arc with the sound barrier as well. In terms of support ults, though, Dallas Fuel, they're broke. They've got neither of them. So New York going into this defense, they have a big edge, big advantage at their disposal. Janice hanging around in the corner. He's got the rival as well. Is he gonna try and boot? He's, he could just try and slap them into the murder hole. That would be really interesting. Or he could just die outright because they are all there ready, ready and waiting for him. I know that dying outright is an option in Overwatch. I often take it. Still trying to get back in here. They've evened it up. Jonak down on the other side. I think they've done a really good job of focusing him with the tanks. Meanwhile, though, their own back line gets shredded up by Sebiobi. In effect, I mean, he is doing damage right now, but he needs to get a D-Mech. He needs to actually connect, but instead, Mecco will survive with a shred of health. It's just This New York team is so deep that the moment you take your eyes off one of them, someone else just comes up with huge plays as well. Desperation, it seems, as Rascal has gone over 
to the far. It should work for at least one of these fights because there's no natural far counter on the field. Will they be able to get back into this at least? That's something to work with. Chone hack with the volley, always so scary to see effects. Thought he found his target and said it's safe. Yobi yet again killing Chip Cyan. There will be the flip, but it's a matter now of Dallas Fuel winning this fight hands down. They have to hold on. Libero will get topped up. Jonax still holding on to his trance. Couldn't decide. Yes, now is the time. And Mickey no longer in this world. Could be the big difference maker. He's getting brutally pressured. Will his blade come out? He's got a baby demon inside. He's able to dash out of it. Oh, that was a sick play. And well, now it's all about Rascal. Can he come up with anything here to work with as Custa is damage boosting him? We're looking for rockets to connect with faces. Not quite gonna happen though in the overtime continues. New York Excel now. Janice just launching himself in there bodily. Mega with the self-destruct though will keep him alive, but Sebyobi is gone. Yeah, they got Sebyobi a little earlier. Now this is going to be an interesting transcend, perhaps not necessary. Easy to nitpick though when your life is on the line here just now. They will flip it back over 75%. New York is gonna have one more push into this. It's gonna be barrier into mayhem because they've got nothing else to work with. And they're gonna have to dodge a barrage as well. No changes coming out to try to deal with this far because, well, it's probably already too late. Well, taking direct rockets right now would be problematic to say the least. And effect has shown it, but whatever. Sound barrier on everybody now, and that is about as good as it gets for New York Excel. Now's the time for them to get the kills to follow up on it, though. Effects looking for a target. Oh! Not gonna find it. And there you go, Effect. He will get that stick. Sure enough, Rascal point blank with the barrage, trying to get it in there, but it's not gonna be good enough. Libero deletes him, and Libero plenty of targets to swing his sword into. Dallas Fuel on the edge of getting overwhelmed. Effect trying to hang in here just a little bit longer. Oh, he's just gonna try to stay alive and touch the point. It is so close, he gets back there one final time. But now the tanks are pushing forward. Dallas so close, but so far. The New York Excelsior will now be in the stage two playoffs. They've locked it up. They've been the best team in the Overwatch League so far. Dallas though, that's the story for me today. I expected New York to win. I expected New York to do everything that New York does, and they did. But Dallas took it to another level. Maybe they're on the brink of really fitting this puzzle together. It does seem like they finally found the pieces. They were hiding under the carpet hex, but you know, they took their time, they searched around, and it's starting to look like they've actually got it going for them here in terms of the tanks duoing up, perhaps. The DPS, they've definitely got that between Rascal and Effect. It's about smoothing out the edges. And while they did manage to take the number one team in the league to five maps, and so a fantastic performance here from the Dallas Fuel yeah. at the end of stage two. Uh, it might all be attitude, positive mental attitudes from Mickey and Seagull right there to lead it off. And you know what's got PMA, everybody over at the desk. Thank you so much, fellas. Let's hear it for the New York XL. Awesome job here today, but also show some love for the Dallas Fuel. So much stronger than anyone could have predicted when seeing this starting lineup coming into the day. Welcome back to the desk. It's Bucket with Bren and Sideshow one more time. And fellas, let's jump right into this. We got three games to cover. Let's go to King's Row, because coming into this map, Holy Hollywood, coming into the hybrid, it was all control won by this Dallas Fuel squad, New York. They came back and were able to take game number three, and they did it by stopping Dallas short of that third point. But throughout this series, what were you seeing from both of the squads? So I think there have been a big improved tank play coming out from Dallas Fuel, but it's the DPS that really defined the second half of the series for me. Uh, Sabiobi went back into a more passive role, while Effect started playing much more aggressively. That effectively took the Tracers out of the situation and made it much more about how Libero and Rascal were playing against each other. And uh, on Hollywood, they couldn't really find much footing. The dives and effects pressure in the back line was getting shut down. But when we went over to Gibraltar, Rascal had a hell of a game. So that, I think, was the, was the difference for me between the two maps we saw in the second half. Let's jump right into that Gibraltar game because I want to look at some of these highlights. Bren, you were saying, Rasko, my man, <laughs> I my was, man. I was. What I was, was he doing? Bit, I was a little bit worried, to be honest, because his Widowmaker wasn't particularly strong, and Gibraltar is known as a map where you need kind of strong Widowmaker fundamentals to actually do well. But they turned that meta game up onto its head. Rascal whipped out the McCree. We saw massive plays coming out from Dallas Fuel. They stopped them just short of that objective, did not let New York Excelsior cap it all the way out, and they turned up big time. I feel like I was super impressed all around generally with Dallas Fuel's own alter column, the rotations, how they were using it. Very efficient across the board when it came to that. 
Yes, and what I love most about this Dallas Fuel roster is that they didn't try anything weird. They are going back to basics. Yes. They're learning dive. They're learning the fundamentals and trying to make that uh, work for them. And this really has not been a team that we've ever seen run fundamental dive compositions. They've never put the work into like defining their shot calls and making sure they can play what most teams would consider the default strategies. So the fact they're now going back to basics, I think will set them up for the long term. Can we pause right here? Let's get a grade on Dallas Fuel. After watching the first four games, how do you think the tanks played with Mickey going from that diva role over to the main tank on Winston and Seagull stepping up as that new diva? So personally, I think that the diva has been the biggest change out of it. I think that Mickey um, often looked a little lost. It was like the tank line didn't have direction. Whether that's down to communication or his initiative, I'm not sure. But Siegel looked to be a, a really competent diva. He was choosing the right times to initiate, punishing enemy Winstons really well, and protecting his back line at times, even though they, they tended to be a bit aggressive. So I really like this coming out from Dallas. When you say grade, like, do you want me to actually grade it? Like, as if In I America, would, uh, we'd normally do A through F. A through F. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'd probably put it up to a good B minus. B minus. A good B minus. I was. I was. Pretty Whereas previously they were a DF. Previously right. they might have been just F, but I mean, we're not going to go there just yet because I uh, don't want to be too savage. You know, just want to. You know, we're picking them up a little bit. You know, That's Dallas. They're starting to play. Starting to play well. Starting to get a bit of momentum, which right. is good. Yeah. B minus for the new tanks. Not bad coming from a far slash Genji slash May and everything else Seagull has shown us. Let's talk about the final game though, because this came down to the DPS for me. SBB effect. You didn't hear them a whole lot on Gibraltar, but it was a Sabi Olby show as we opened up on Ruin. Yeah, he was filthy, man. I, I'm not, you, literally, you, you cannot really put this man down in this game. They tried to sort of put a stop to him. Rascal was playing the Sombra, but again, it was just being shut down time and time again. Jonak was left to his own devices. They kept trying to dive onto him. They kept trying to pick him off, but again, he was getting these picks across the map in multiple different scenarios. But again, the start of the show for me has to be Sabi Olby. Yes, and I think that this, as we moved over to a map that favors Tracers, Sabiobi, instead of trying to check effect constantly, just said, okay, I'm going for your backline, and decided to go onto the Dallas Fuel supports, see if he could get onto Rascal occasionally, and had a hell of a game. So I think at the moment, NYXL is getting a lot more value out of having Sabiobi in this aggressive role rather than passive, at least against the slightly lower level teams. We'll have to see whether they change it up when they go into playoffs. Unleash the beast, and normally you have to have him passive when your back line is taking so much damage. Today, when he was on that front line causing problems, you could see the result. After that series, we know New York XL is the first team to lock up a spot in the title matches on Sunday. One of three. The question is who will be joining them. Today, though, we have to crown our player of the match sponsored by Omen by HP. And it's not SBB. It's his partner in crime, Libero, doing the damage today, boys. Yeah, this guy, again, another player who people really didn't pay too much attention to at the start of the Overwatch League. But again, he's turned up and he's got progressively better as the season has gone on. And he's gone from this sort of, you know, consistent sort of projectile player to this guy who's running all sorts. You know, he's pulling out the Widowmaker, he's pulling out the McCree at times as well. Really just a jack of all trades, but he's turning up on all of them. Definitely not a master of none because he's mastering what seems to be almost every DPS in his arm. Seven different heroes played today. Sideshow, which one was most impressive in your eyes? I think it's the Hanzo. Hanzo, <laughs> baby! <laughs> Very few people can pull out a top-level Hanzo. They just use it for the, the scatter arrows, like firing them randomly around corners. But Libero consistently gets picks with them and can do these long-range snipes. He's a god on Hanzo. All right, that is a look at our second match of the day, but we're not done yet. So far, we've seen Houston upset Seoul. New York goes to Game 5 versus Dallas. What's in store for us next? We got the Shock taking on the Boston Uprising when we return, don't go anywhere.